Welcome, Cheesemaker fans, to another night of Cheesemakers football, brought to you by Tillamook Bay Community College, Tillamook Motors, Roby's Furniture and Appliance, SC Paving, Tillamook County Transportation District, City Sanitary Service, Dave Hollinsworth, State Farm Insurance, Tillamook County Family YMCA, and Les Schwab. Now let's take it down to the field with Randy Shield. Winner, plans to attend college next year, major in civil engineering and minor in business. Good evening, Tillamook High School football fans. It's warm-up time. Tonight, Tillamook High School Cheesemakers take the field in a critical Co-op League game for the Cheesemakers. If they want to play past next Friday night, they're going to have to win tonight here in Valley Catholic. Valley Catholic is 2-4 and four on the season and 0-3 oh and three in the Co-op League. Of course, they've been without their quarterback for the last couple of weeks, so that didn't help them at all. But uh, Valley Catholic fighting for their own playoff life as well as the Cheesemakers and Valley Catholic uh, Valiants get ready to square off here tonight on a just an incredibly beautiful night in the Valley as we're on in downtown Beaverton almost, right along Highway 99 here in Beaverton. <laughs> Cheesemakers coming off a tough Obviously, loss up in Astoria where they fell 25-12 to 12 to the Astoria Fishermen on a nasty rainy Obviously, night a week ago. Roger, and the uh, Cheesemakers Obviously, now are fighting an uphill Roger, battle as they take on a team that has a lot of talent in some places, some very good quickness and so forth, and they will uh, take to the field tonight against the Tillamook Cheesemakers. We had a chance to talk to Tillamook head coach Kai Johnson for tonight's game. We'll have that interview after this word from the Tillamook Bay Community College. Community College. Still the Cheesemakers and Valley Catholic Valiants here on a Coapa League uh, game in Beaverton as the Cheesemakers take on Valley Catholic. Last year, Tillamook came out and competed very, very well here, although they trailed at halftime. They won 55 to 20 or something like that, ran away with it in the second half. Tillamook's going to have to play well tonight, though, to win this ball game. Before the game, we had a chance to talk to Tillamook head coach Kai Johnson. Here's what Kai had to say. Kai, you come in tonight's game coming off a tough loss up in Astoria. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how your kids came out of that ball game and, and what you learned from it? Well, we, you know, we're, we're right there with Astoria. I think if we play them again, you know, we feel good about getting the win. Um, just one of those nights where we didn't catch a lot of breaks. Uh, there's, that there's any excuses for it, but, you know, we – punch a touchdown in and about six plays to open the game up. And we run 30 offensive plays for the remainder of the game. The clock was just screaming by. We didn't, we couldn't really get into a flow. Um, we had five fourth downs converted on us. It was just a, a tough night. It was a hard fought football game. I know the score was 25 to 12, but it was really a two play difference of a football game. Um, and I think what we learned from it was, you know, we, we have to, be more even keel regardless of whether a good play happens or a bad play happens. And that's a message that we've had all year with our guys. But um, last week was good evidence for us of that. We, we score a touchdown, we get a three and out to start the game. And then we, uh, we biffed a punt return that Astoria recovered and we kind of sulked on it until halftime. Um, we really needed to get back into the locker room before we could regroup ourselves. And we have to avoid that. You know, that's, Thank you, Part senior. of the challenge of being a, a young man and a football player is, you know, moving past those moments that are difficult and um, worrying about what is important right now. So hopefully that that uh, is a learning moment for us and we can move forward this week because certainly Valley Catholic is going to make some plays and, you know, we, keep, we just can't be too high and too low and um, we got to just fight the whole game. So Valley Catholic uh, comes in. They're not deep, but they certainly are talented in their uh, first crew. Got some great size, got some great quickness. And for you, this is probably a playoff game. Well, if we win, we feel like there's a pretty dang good chance that we're in, um, just considering how good our league is and Seaside. And, you know, we don't have Seaside opponent record on our schedule yet, and that's always going to inflate us. Um, when you play a number one and a number two team and banks and seaside play each other tonight. So there's a whole lot of mathematical stuff that will work itself out. Um, but you're right. We feel like it, tonight is our play in game essentially. 
Um, and they are good. I mean, they all, every year Valley Catholic has a couple of the best kids in the league. They've got an offensive lineman who just sticks out like a sore thumb because he's about six seven. I think he's got all kinds of colleges uh, wanting him to be a part of you know, playing at the next level. Their quarterback is a great three-sport athlete. Um, they've got some good athletes, but we are deeper. Um, you know, we feel like as long as as long as we're playing hard, the second half is uh, you know going to be ours tonight, and like it was last year. So that's kind of the same game plan we've got. So, what do you expect out of Valley today? What are they going to try to do to you? you? Had trouble against the pass last week. You going to see that again? Yeah, they'll throw the ball. Number two's back. Their quarterback has missed two weeks from a concussion and was in protocol, but he can really throw it around, and he's pretty mobile too. Um, he, you know, I, I would expect them to throw it 25 or 30 times tonight. They'll challenge our secondary. They have a couple of kids that can run pretty well too. So um, I think where we have an advantage is in the trenches. We have a lot more size, um, some bodies that we can rotate in there and you know, to combat their good skill guys, we're going to have to win the line of scrimmage and make their quarterback uncomfortable and uh, get him moving off of his spot and getting some sacks and just creating some havoc overall. So if there's one key to this game, one thing you have to do well in order to win, what is it? Pound the football on offense, running it effectively um, in between the tackles, off tackle, getting the ball outside to our skill guys on fly sweep, um, and just sustaining drives in general, um, avoiding the three and outs. You know, we've really got to lean on our front because we feel like it's a big advantage for us tonight. Well, Kai, wish you the best of luck and look for a fun game on a beautiful night. This is unbelievable weather tonight. So, yeah, hopefully it'll be another good night for the Cheesemakers in Beaverton. Thanks, Kai. Thank you. Go much. And again, we'd like to thank Kai Johnson for his comments before tonight's game on warm-up time. We'll be back with more warm-up time after this word from the Tillamook Bay Community College. Welcome back to Cheesemaker Football and Warm-Up Time, brought to you by the Tillamook Bay Community College. Tillamook Cheesemakers and the Valley Catholic Valiants, the Valiants in Senior Night, have just introduced all their seniors down on the track in a beautiful setting here. They have one of the most magnificent turf uh, surfaces here you could ask for on this private school in Beaverton, and they've come out and uh, have a good crowd on hand. They also, this is the second year in a row we've been here for the chili cook-off. And they have about 30 different chilies down there, and they'll let you try any of them, man, give you a free hot dog along the way as well, as uh, they treat you very, very well here in Valley Catholic. As, uh, now we will get ready for the national anthem here from Valley Catholic. And the singing of the national anthem here from Valley Catholic High School is the Valley Catholic Valiants and the Cheesemakers get ready. 
to square it up. Starting lineup, first of all, for Valley Catholic, in the line is going to be uh, Edward Elston. Elston is 6'2", 185 pounds and a junior. Nathan Lule is 6'1", 215 and a sophomore. William uh, Drossler is 6'1", 185 and a sophomore. And Derek Eck is 6'4", 220 and a junior. And then their lone senior, Isaac Flemmer, looking to go play football somewhere next year. He's 6'7", 265, and he looks all of that. In the backfield is going to be Nico Herrera, a big kid, uh, a uh, three-year letterman at 5'985 and a senior. And then next to him, Cade Napoli. Napoli is 6'3", 205 and a senior. He's a four-year letterman. William uh, Schuthis is 5'11", 170 pound junior. And Trey Everhart is the quick one at 5'9", 175 pounds and a junior, a three-year starter already. And then at quarterback, Daniel Pruitt. Pruitt, great athlete. 6'2", 195 pounds, and a junior. Starting lineup for the Tillamook Cheesemakers on the other side of the ball, similar to what we've seen over the course of the last few weeks. Cheesemakers on the line will be uh, Brian Rieger, a senior, uh, Michael Horton, a senior, Aiden Johnson, only a freshman, Dawson McKibben will be at the center as a senior, and Perry Reeder is a junior. He'll have his hands full tonight against the big kid on the other side of the line. And then in the backfield, it's going to be uh, Silvera first, Matt Silvera, and a little bit of news on him as he rolled his ankle pretty bad a night ago, and they weren't even sure that he'd be able to play tonight. They're going to go ahead and start him and see how he does, but he's certainly going to be slower tonight than he normally is, and that could be a big factor in this ball game. Also in the backfield, it's going to be uh, Caleb Boomer, actually, is a wideout. Chris Silvera be in the backfield right next to his twin brother, Matt. And then Caleb Warner will move around from the backfield out to a wing and so forth. And then wideouts will be uh, Trent Stonebrink along with Caleb Boomer. This has been warm-up time brought to you by the Tillamook Bay Community College. Cheesemakers and the Valley Catholic Valiants. Nate, I wasn't at last week's game. I know it was a disappointing loss for the well, Cheesemakers. Uh, big and game tonight. Fun. What do you see out of the books? Well, it's going to be a bounce-back game. Um, kids definitely felt Valiant that they were uh, a, a superior uh, football team <clears throat> than Astoria, and uh, tell, no, none of the breaks went Tillamook's way uh, last weekend. There were a couple offensive plays that uh, Astoria made that Tillamook couldn't disrupt, and there was a, a couple defensive plays that Tillamook made that had to come back and be replayed, and, and uh, just none of the breaks went their way. And uh, the teams are evenly a match that if you don't get to make the plays, then you're going to lose that football game. Um, so this is going to be a bounce back. I think Tillamook, uh, the kids and the coaching staff, had their eyes on uh, that third-place position in league and being able to most likely host a football game in the first round, and tonight you're playing for fourth. And yep. uh, what that means is you're going to be traveling, and you're probably be traveling to one of the best twos in the state, and that is a whole different kettle of fish. Yeah, a long ways to go in a lot of cases for that one as well, <laughs> although we'll find that out more next week. Tillamook still has Seaside on the schedule. That's next week. They're the, oh, depends where you look, the number one or two ranked team in the state. We'll know after tonight because those two play each other. T- uh, Seaside and Banks play in Seaside. It's going to be a really interesting ball game. We've seen Banks. They're really good. No, we, we have, and they are really good. And Seaside is uh, sort of the other side of good from what uh, Banks does. Uh, they're run first. Yep. And uh, so we're going to try to get you scores uh, over the course of the uh, evening. Um, I've got a, a text out to uh, Rex Metcalf to see if we can track down uh, scores because I'd be interested to see how that game shakes out just for uh, pure f- fanatic reasons. Oh, yeah. Just for entertainment. And no different than we saw in the last couple of years in basketball. The Quaxico League has been the class of the oh, state. Yeah, absolutely, hands down. And it looks like in football they might be again this year. Cheesemaker's going to kick it off as Tanner Richardson, line drive, fielded, bounced at the nine-yard line, now going to return to the near side. Gets around out to the 20 and then thrown down to the 22-yard line. And not a lot of speed right there. No. That, was, that was fairly a pedestrian. Return of the ball there was uh, Luke Monroe a 6'160 pound senior, and onto the field comes the black-clad Valley Catholic Valiants with silver numbers and dark blue stripes. Tillamook in there all white with red numbers tonight. As Valley will move right to left across your radio dial in the opening possession of the ball game. Randy Shield along with Nathan Radcliffe, your broadcast crew over FM 95.9 KTIL. Shotgun set back on either side. Cheesemaker's going to stunt. Hand off straight up the middle. Big hole. He could go. Cut right at the end by uh, Shelley. 
but all the way out to the 39 on a gain of about 15 goes the big back, Nepali. We knew that Nepali is going to be a load for the cheesemakers. Tell them extent a bunch of linebackers inside trying to make something yep. happen. And, and over, left, overran the play. Left a pretty big hole behind them. Napoli now on the right side of the quarterback, who's Pruitt. Pruitt takes a snap, same play again. Near side, now he breaks to the outside. Around he comes. Shelly's going to wrap up the tackle again, but again a six first. Takes it out to the 45-yard line as Napoli, with back-to-back carries, has 20 yards in the book already. Yeah, nothing fancy right there. Running over the big guy, number 77, Isaac Flemmer, that 6'7", 265-pound senior at the left tackle. Sometimes those numbers are a little inflated. Not uh, there. I don't think so there. Oh, nope. my goodness. That kid is a house. Lined up across from Michael Horton. Yep. Shotgun set again. Second down and five. Cheesemakers show stunt. They're going to hand off to the back on the left side. Gets the first down and more. Out across midfield down to the 45. Finally wrapped first up there by Horton Romero. as well as Werner getting off the bottom of the pile. No, I take that back. That's Boomer getting off the bottom of the pile. And he comes up hobbling a little bit. That he'll stay in the ball game. Three plays, two first downs for Valley because they take it right at the Cheesemakers. And talking with Kai before the game, what we decided or said was that Tillamook has to be in it at halftime. If you are in it at halftime, you got a good shot in the second half. Yeah, they don't have many hats on the sidelines. 27 total bodies for Valley Catholic. Cheesemakers on defense, showing stunt again. Pruitt at quarterback, hands it off to the near side. Napoli hitting the background. Horton stunted through, takes him down, and... Caleb Warner as well. It's going to be a loss of about three on the play as they throw him back a few yards. After that, it'll be back to the 48-yard line. It'll be second down and 13. So well, nice play by the Cheesemaker yeah, D. Caleb Warner jumped the gap, and uh, that freed up Michael Horton because the block went to uh, the linebacker side, and that allowed the defensive tackle to come through and make the play. Nice job by Michael Horton and not overrunning and uh, staying home and making the fundamental tackle. A little bit surprised to see Everhart on the uh, – sidelines two-year starter there play action pass going to throw right man open in the flats but threw it behind him open was napoli but uh, threw it behind him couldn't get a hand on that ball it's incomplete now it's third and long for the valiants on their opening possession as they move right to left on a crystal clear and calm what? night here uh, it's crazy here crazy. Second, second week in october right the last saturday actually monday of this week i was in wyoming and getting snowed on good would never believe that no. based on tonight. No. Nope. 70 degrees today, 72 out, actually out here. Third and long, third and 13. Pruitt, back to throw. Straight drop, going to throw right side. Cuts inside. Good jump on the passing That's lane. Creates the incomplete pass. Zeke Kuhn did a great job of reading that and really driving hard on the football and uh, timed it well, made contact with the receiver just as the ball came through. And that's uh, exactly how you draw it up. Yeah, very, Drive hard on the ball, don't beat it. Very nicely done by Zeke that time, and no chance there on a ball that was overthrown, but well defended nonetheless. And the first exchange of possessions, hopefully, Thanks, will happen Valley. right here as Thanks, Valley will punt from their own 40-yard line. Will run to the right, and then a short end-over-end kick. Going to go to the right side. Look out, Zeke. It comes close to him, and now bounces away and rolls dead at the 31-yard line. And that is where the cheesemakers will take over. Well, you'll take that as an exchange because the first three plays were a little uh, inasquicious of, of the debut as the uh, Valley just pretty much ran as they wanted to. Yeah, it looked, looked like it was going to be a uh, short trip to the end zone for yep. Valley. But but you made a play. You put them in second and 13. Uh, they had to throw. Well, they didn't. maybe they didn't have to throw, but they chose to throw on second. It was incomplete, and then pretty much you have to throw on third in that yeah. situation. And the cheesemakers get the stop. So Mount Silvera in the back. Field at quarterback, sporting that uh, bad ankle tonight. They'll send motion left to right. Hand off on the fly sweep to Boomer. Boomer breaks inside, now outside, stops, cuts back, and goes out to the 35. He's going to get about four yards on the carry. Not a lot of room to run on the outside. Cheesebecker's going to try to figure out whether they have the speed advantage or not. Well, it's interesting. Uh, the uh, linebacker, uh, Napoli did a really nice job of playing cat and mouse with Boomer. He's, uh, he was on one side of the block, and Caleb was started to cut, and then he jumped to the other side of the block, and Caleb had to go back, and, and Boomer was, would, had really made a wise choice to pick up his four instead of bouncing it to the sidelines. Valley has good athletes on the defensive line. Flemmer, of course, the big guy at nose guard, going to hand off the left side, stops, cuts left, hit at the line of scrimmage, maybe gets an extra yard out of it, is Chris Silvera. 
and it'll be a gain of, oh, they're going to mark him up and say two, and it'll be second down and about four, make that third down and about four for the Cheesemakers on their opening possession. A uh, nice battle here between Dawson McKibben and, and uh, oh. the, the, the Hawks. The as, uh, it's a really uh, an interesting battle. Yeah, Dawson McKibben. is way overmatched physically, but it's easy to get in underneath the kid that's six foot five, and if you can get leverage on him, you're, you're going to at least be able to turn his hip. Problem is, he has about 80 pounds on him, too. They hand to Messiah deep back. He's going to get thrown down at about the 40. He'll be short of the first down by about a yard. So the cheesemakers run it right out of them. Uh, but what I am interested in seeing is that there's push. Yeah. That line is moving forward, isn't it? I, I think there were. And cheesemakers are going to go for it on fourth and one. They come directly to the line of scrimmage. Up under center, and, oh, they get Valley to jump, but the right tackle is yeah, cheesemakers jump as well. Yeah, but then, but the, the question is, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Valley Catholic definitely made, made the first move. And then Tillamook reacted to that, which is not legal. And it's going to be, I think, against Valley Catholic. They're too. backing up. They're backing up. They were clearly the first one to jump, but so often it's the offense that's uh, flagged any time they move. I think that was more protection. Than well, they might have made else. contact, and once you come across, and I think you make contact, the play's dead. Just stop right there. So the first down, nice job by the cheesemakers yep. on that. Immediately yep. going into the no play, got uh, – Valley on their heels right away and made them jumpy, and they jumped across, and Cheesemakers get the first first down of the night for them. Motion right to left goes Warner. They'll fake the handoff to him, hand to Chris Silvera in the backfield. Oh, couldn't get away. He had a leg tied up and couldn't shake it free. It's like he got roped by the calf rope. Hung on, and then down he went. No gain on the play. Nico Herrera did a really nice job of hog tying Chris by a shoelace, and he just couldn't get away. It has been uh, pretty close on the stalemate at the line of scrimmage so far. Not a huge amount of push either direction from either side. Well, there hasn't been. I guess what I'm saying is is, is that there's push. Is there's been no penetration. No penetration. Right. There's been no penetration by by Valley's defense. Now I don't know if they've been sending linebackers. I don't think they have been. And off to the right side. Silvera there's makes the move left. Now cuts back to the left side. Gets a little room across midfield. Gets the first down inside the 45, down to the 43. And that was all a cut made in the backfield by Chris Silvera to get the first down against the grain. Well, and that's what penetration, so penetration came from our offensive right side, and, and Chris felt that and uh, hopped to his left, and, and, and suddenly the pressure was gone, right? So they came, they are able to cross the right-hand side where the play was designed to be run, but then Chris went to the back side of the formation, and he found some real estate there. Nice little scamper of 14 yards and picked up legit first down. Second first down of the drive for the Cheesemakers. They're in Valley territory, showed, moving left to right. Showed some quickness. Yep. I backs in the back. No, one back in the backfield. Offset eye. Hands off left side. Macias tries to get to the outside. He's going to dive ahead for about a yard and a half. He's lucky not to take a loss, as in the backfield quickly that time was Napoli. Napoli flipping sides as a defensive end or outside linebacker, and that time went to the short side of the field and right into Macias. He seems to be the guy you might want to run away from. But now they're bringing some pressure. That, that second time in a row, they brought a linebacker. Yep. And the cheesemakers in the past have struggled at times with handling pressure yep. in the line of scrimmage. If Tillamook has time, I think Valley could be susceptible to misdirection. Boomer comes split wide to the right, Shelley wide to the left. They'll hand off. Straight up the middle, Macias. Gets caught, but he keeps his feet moving inside the 40, down to about the 36 or 7-yard line. It'll bring up third down and about four for the cheesemakers on a nice run by Macias as Macias took it over right tackle and found a little bit of a seam and then ran it, kept his legs moving hard. He kind of lost his balance coming through the line of scrimmage. I think he expected contact. He kind of covered up and put his head down like he was ready to get popped. And when the pressure wasn't there, he kind of stumbled like he was expecting it. And and he was able to uh, maintain his forward motion, but he had kind of lost his balance. Big play, third down and four in four down territory. And they get Valley to jump off sides again. The hard count gives Tillamook their second first down on this drive by way of penalty, by way of offsides penalty. And the Cheesemakers keep their drive alive on third and four with a five-yard penalty, and they move the ball down to the 31-yard line. Well, Opening drive, 459 left to play, first period, no score. And that's, uh, that, that does a lot of things for you offensively, oh. right? And not only gets you a set of downs, but it slows all of that stuff down. And you've just demonstrated you're in control of the pace of the football game. 
It also does a lot of things for you defensively. Back to pass left side. Throws it up in the air to Shelley. He goes up and comes down with a great catch right over the top of the defender at the 10-yard line. First down cheesemakers is Silvera. Just threw it up for grabs, and Kellen Shelley went up and got it. Well, there was a huge amount of pressure put on by uh, Will French, a six foot two sophomore, as uh, just throwing the ball, and he was blind, and that was because he just turned and, and threw the ball as far as he could, and Kellen was the one that made the play. Yeah, totally. Matt was throwing it just to not get crushed, and Kellen was catching it for the first down, pick up a 20. So, first and almost goal, ball rests just outside the 10 yard line. The sticks are stretched, so apparently you could get a first down. That would be highly unlikely. Cheesemakers, first down, deep in Valley territory. Hands off, straight ahead. Chris Silvera, he's going to drive inside the five. Nice push to the five, and that was, and here's a late flag comes out. Uh, That could be terribly detrimental if it's an offensive penalty. No, it's going to be a face mask. It looks like me. So Chris picked up five on the rush, right? Because the ball's placed inside the five. So it's actually going to be more like six on the rush. And it's either going to be a face mask or that guy has an itchy nose. It it's is a condition. A face mask. It's a condition. Come on, let's not let's not let's not belittle it, right? And it will go to the two and a half yard line. It'll give the cheesemakers the first down all over again. First and goal for the cheesemakers. And so Telemuk knocking on the door. Third first down via penalty. Yeah, three out of four first downs on this drive. And the five because they had the pass. That's right. Come on. Oh, that's, that's what you have me for, right? I appreciate my color man making <laughs> fun of me. Hand off. Going to go to the right side. Trying to get to the outside. Now cuts. Inside the five. Dives. Touchdown, Cheesemakers. The Cheesemakers drive it down the field and score with 3.57 left to play in the first period. It was Chris Silvera taking it in as he ran the sweep to the right side, found a right to the gap just outside the slot, and then dove it into the end zone, and the Cheesemakers take the opening game leads six to nothing as they'll come in and attempt the extra point. As Richardson grabs the pad and brings it in to set it down at the 10. Chris Silvera, who just scored the touchdown, will be the holder as well. They'll wait. Good snap. Balls down. Kicks up. And it is good. Tillamook leads seven to nothing. Just under four minutes left, first period. We'll take a one minute break. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Cheesemaker Football. Great drive by the Cheesemakers as they get ready to kick off for the second time. High end over end gonna be Caught at the 13-yard line. Going to return to the near side. Cuts left, cuts right, up the seam, and goes down at the 30. Make it the 31. That was Nate, a 10-play drive covering 69 oh. yards and uh, five and a half minutes. That was one of those possessions that Astoria gave us uh, last weekend that we could never get the football back. We just couldn't smell the football in the second half because they had these huge drives. Tillamook uh, ends up with Kellen uh, Shelley who made the play on that drive, I think. Yep. of uh, being able to collect that pass and getting the sticks down inside the red zone. And he add that to the three offsides penalty, uh, uh, three first downs by way of penalty. And the Cheesemakers took it down and scored. Motion left to right. Everhart, his first carry of the ball game. Going to get to the outside at the 30. Cuts the 35 out across almost to the 40-yard line. He's going to pick up nine on the carry. Ever, Everhart, who we've seen in basketball and in football for the last couple of years already, still only a junior, extremely quick at 5'9", 175 pounds in a junior. Gain a nine on the play as Everhart sits out. Now, that could have been a senior night thing. Yeah. It uh, could have been lots of things, actually. Got a split in the slot on the near side, but they're both up on the line of scrimmage, so they can't be throwing the ball. Handoff going to go Everhart the other way. That's a hold. Boy, stretched the jersey all the way out on Caleb Warner. No call. And then pushed out of bounds is Everhart at the 48-yard line. I got to tell you, that was Caleb Warner almost had his jersey pulled off him. Almost untucked it. As a outside linebacker on the near side with a big hand on it. But a first down out to, to, to the 49 for Valley in back-to-back plays, just like on the last possession. Again, Valley has 
A split in the slot. They cannot throw the ball down the field. Oh, they do. And complete. And I don't know what that official is looking at over there because that was an ineligible receiver. But it's caught down to the 31-yard line. The reason I say it was an ineligible receiver is that the slot was up on the line of scrimmage. You cannot have a split end on the line of scrimmage as well, have the slot be covered up and have them be eligible going down the field. But I say you can't. You just did. I know. So what does that tell you? <laughs> uh, nothing. <laughs> The first, suggestion. first down at the 32. Everhart motion, going to take a sweep to the right side. Outside he goes, out across the 30, and there's, there's a, hold. a holding call yeah, finally. It's on Messiah, this, or against Messiah. Going to be taking it down to the 20-yard line, <laughs> and that is a holding penalty, and you can see it again, except this time it was on Messiah, who was the defensive end on the far side, and it's going to be brought back. A gain of about 14 on the play but you're going to end up losing about 13 on it going the other way because of the hold, and it was clear, and we're a long ways away. Well, you could tell Messiah was trying to get off it, and he got actually got snapped around, and he turned the wrong direction. Like, I understand the way you spin in order to gain a better angle, but he spun the wrong direction, and that's because he had some assistance on the pirouette. And uh, he ain't a ballerina. No, no, no. No, that was that – was, uh, Some assistance. That was helped. And now the cheesemakers – Put Valley back into a a first and long situation. We'll see if Valley has the patience to run the ball like they've done in the first few plays of this drive very successfully. Well, they completed 18 yards to French. They did. Maybe they're thinking they have the ability. Pruitt going to hand the ball on the ground. Cheesemakers have it. Tried to run a little slot reverse in the backfield, and it was dropped, and Caleb Werner jumps on it, and the Cheesemakers get it back on the turnover, the first turnover of the game. And, boy, there's two plays that were a huge swing there. Instead of first down at the 20-yard line for Valley, going in, the ball's all the way back to the 49, and the Cheesemakers have it going the other way. Nice Tell job them. by Caleb Warner to, to see that and just jump on it. That was quickness by Caleb Warner, who had already stunted through and cleared the line of scrimmage, and then pounced on the ball, and the cheesemakers have it, moving left to right, with 2.22 left to play in the first period, up 6 to nothing. It looks like Tristan going after Burrito. I mean, that was quick. <laughs> that was? Uh, quick. Going to hand off deep back. Silvera, left side, got a little bit of room. Needs a block, gets around the corner. At the 30, or at the 50, inside to the 40, and out of bounds at the 39. Chris Silvera, good hard run to the left side. Bounced it all the way out there and then turned on the Jets and the Cheesemakers get the first down. They continue to move the ball effectively on the offensive side of the ball. Did a really nice job of setting first contact right at the line of scrimmage. There's a little contact, and Chris uh, stiff-armed and was able to slide off that, found a soft corner, put his head down the last four yards, picked up the first down, 37 yards of rushing on six carries and a touchdown. And off to the left side, Macias breaks the tackle in the backfield, makes a nice cut on the left side, goes down the left sideline. Inside the 35, he'll pick up about seven, make it eight yards that he probably should have had nothing of. Well, again, coming across was Napoli, and and, uh, Napoli was not able to uh, make the tackle and uh, put a uh, a foot in the ground and uh, picked up, oh, I don't know, seven yards. They're going to bring it back now and say he was out of bounds. Is there laundry? Oh, Oh, there is. Well, there's a reason there's a soft corner. Going to be holding against the Cheesemakers. They were cheating just like Valley did on the last possession. And it'll come back to the 45-yard line. The difference of this holding penalty is that uh, it happened about five yards downfield. Cheesemakers. It's going to be first down again and 16 now by the Cheesemakers. Well, there's a reason that corner was soft. Yep. Yep. They had help there. These makers come to the line of scrimmage with a tight and two wideouts this side. They'll hand to Macias, cuts it off tackle, running hard, dives ahead of the 40. He'll pick up five yards on the carry. Four yard carry four yeah, I nine. thought early in the year that Macias was only going to be a uh, speed back, only running around the corner. He's done a nice job of running after contact. Yeah, he uh, his, his wrestling his wrestling career shows right there. Yeah, he's not very big. No, but he isn't afraid of contact. <laughs> you know, and uh, he you know he survived his family. He survived his brother, man. <laughs> you know, I know Alexis, and and that was not an easy world that Luis was brought up in, and, and did a really nice job of uh, running hard on contact. Sam Conley, the tight end of the near side, has got his hands full too as he's blocking to the outside. Boomer goes in motion. He'll take it on the fly sweep to the outside. 
gets thrown down and gets about a yard is all. It's a steeplechase out there as uh, Caleb had to jump over Kellen Shelley, who was blocking. I think probably if Caleb looks at that again, he'll say, should have cut in underneath that block rather than pop into the outside. Yeah, get what I can get. He ended up stringing out all the way to the sidelines and picked up only about a yard on the play and will bring up third down and ten. If you're jumping over your wide receiver who is who is the only guy out there blocking, blocking, I would suggest (laughs) you get in behind him and underneath it, inside it. And so third down long, third and ten for the cheesemakers. I got a little shout-out from Tristan, so at least we have one person listening That's at home. Good. That's three, good. Three receivers on the near side. Silvera going to look right, runs oh, across. Nice draw, nice. He's got look at that. Inside the 30, inside the 20. Sidelines out of bounds. That is a great play call right there, isn't it? It ran as a draw as Matt Silvera. Headed right like he was going to throw and then handed on a little counter going the other way. And we told you we thought Valley was susceptible to the misdirection. And, boy, they were that time. It's a big play on third and long. And the Cheesemakers have the first down down to the 18-yard line. Tillamook making all the right calls here early in this ball game with 111 left to play in the first period. 29-yard pickup and uh, by, by Chris. And it was an, a great play call. It was exactly the right time against exactly the right defensive call. Messiah in the backfield with Caleb Warner in front of him. Motion left to right. It's going to go Shelley. Play action. Now there's a flag down. It's going to be a it'll, formation issue. Yeah, it'll be oh. Messiah who pushes the pile ahead and gets about four, but that's, they're going to bring that back. That's impressive. And, and what's amazing about that play is the penalty had nothing to do with it. No, no. You know, the holding penalty that we had a couple plays ago, the reason the play was successful, you know, for the last 80% was because of the holding call. This was a formation penalty. Messiah picked up seven yards just completely on his own. He just got in underneath and the volcano moved it. Too many people in the backfield, I'm guessing, is what the call will be. As Tillamook uh, is backing up, and Valley being talked to. The five-yard gain will be eliminated and go five yards the other way, so that's actually a 10-yard loss, but they do get first down over again. So the ball comes out to the 23-yard line of Valley with a 7 or nothing lead for the Cheesemakers and 103 left to play in the first period. Delmick's first drive just Munch the clock to pieces. Yeah, but it took a couple of special plays to keep that thing going. And so if Tillema can, can continue moving the ball in a regular pattern here, then I'm a believer that we might be uh, more physical than, than yeah. Valley. But it took a couple uh, sleight-of-hand plays to be able to uh, keep that first drive going. Richardson comes in as a wideout or a slot on the right side. Haven't seen him in that role very often. They'll hand off straight up the middle. Nice cut by Macias. No, it's Silvera from the 10, the 5, touchdown. He takes it straight up the middle for the score. Nice. Chris Silvera from 23 yards out takes it right up the middle, and the Cheesemakers have a 13 to nothing lead. And that was not fancy right there, oh. man. And there were a couple of blue-clad uh, valiants lying face down at about the 13-yard line. They, they dove and missed. He took stuck a foot hard in the ground on the left side, cut it back to the middle, and the Cheesemakers have shown that they're quicker than – the Valiants tonight. Richardson going to bring the tee in and set it down, the kicking pad. Chris Silvera, again, having scored, and now is the holder. Good snap, kicks up, and it is good again. 14 to nothing. Good start by the Cheesemakers with 32 seconds left in the first period. Tell them a cup, 14 to nothing. Back in one minute. Welcome back to Cheesemaker football. 14 to nothing. Cheesemakers lead. They score after the turnover. Tillamook will kick off. Boy, that's a bomb. To the goal line. Going to be returned out to the 10. Going to return to the right side across the 15. Now the 20. Wrapped up and taken down as a Tanner got all of that one as Richardson put it all the way to the goal line. Just outside the goal line. It was caught, and uh, apparently there's a flag. Five plays, 51 yards. Took a minute and 50 seconds to uh, put the second touchdown up on the board. Chris Silvera runs it in from 23 yards out. Does a really nice job, Tillamook, right there, maintaining their their momentum and including overcoming um, not one but two penalties, right? There were were two. There was a five-yard penalty and a a holding call that was five yards past the line of scrimmage that put him in a first and 15, uh, not once but twice. And uh, Tillamook was able to overcome both of those. 
and uh, a, a great job of just being able to put your foot down and exert your will. Valiants have a uh, holding penalty on the return, so this ball goes all the way back to the 11-yard line to start this possession. 89 yards away from the end zone, motion. Going to hand off to Everhart. Everhart comes outside, gets cut off there, going to oh, get taken down. Caleb Warner isn't going to get the tackle, nope. but he made the play, didn't he? He made the play. He turned it back in as he got wide that time and didn't get held and turned in. And then coming up was Messiah from the inside to make the tackle. A loss of two on the play. It's going to bring up second down and 12. And uh, it's, it's all fine and dandy if your end comes across and boxes down that hard. But if your linebacker isn't flowing, you're still in trouble because you're going to get run underneath. And the horn sounds for the end of the first period of play. Good first quarter by the Cheesemakers. They lead 14 to nothing after one. We'll take a one-minute break. We'll be back after this. Seem to do it. Welcome back to Cheesemaker Football and the, the second period. I, you know, I give you the play-by-play of everything. Well, as we go to break there, my watch dies. I know. That's my so, stopwatch. And the only way oh, we wait. have it comes back on right now. Figure well, I that told out. you, it's a little screwdriver. Yeah. No, it, but, but who saved the day, man? You did. The guy oh. who only, like, got his first cell phone seven days ago. Well, Pops I, his cell phone out with the stopwatch going and flops it on the table. Nice job. That's what I brought you for. <laughs> that's what I get paid seventeen twenty five a game that's for. That's right. <laughs> that Val- comic relief, right? <laughs> Valley with the ball, second down and 12 from their own nine. Reverse. They'll hand off second back. Nice. Cut down and then Lot reverse from the far side to the near side. Luis Macias didn't fall for it. Stepped into the hole, forced it back inside, and Messiah is the one that cleans it up. Everhart a little bit slow getting up that time after the short gain. Going to be a gain of three on the play and bring up third down and nine. First half staff, first quarter staff, Tillamook like Cheesemakers end up with uh, 10, uh, 15 plays for 120 yards. 100 on the ground, 20 in the air. Eight plays for 63 yards for Valley Catholic. Rushed the ball seven times, 45 yards. Threw the ball three times, completed one. So you're going to take, if you're Tillamook, like, you're going to take a 15-play quarter yeah. first. You'll take that. Yeah, Secondly, they only got 30 in the whole game plus their first drive. 36 last week. That's really good. Yeah, that's got to be an illegal substitution, man. They broke the huddle with 12. Quarterback going to roll left, third and long. In trouble in the backfield, going to scramble to get free, and now he does. On the far side, goes out across the 20 and out of bounds and gets the first down. Good athleticism by Pruitt right there. First time we've seen Pruitt move that way, and the cheesemakers have a player down on the far sideline. Yeah, pursuing. They got tangled up. Kel and Shelley. I and believe it's Boomer out yeah, there. Yeah, it's Boomer. Yep. It was the two of them that got, tang- that got tangled up. Boomer does come back into the ball game, and that was all just ad lib by the quarterback Pruitt, who had time to throw the ball, couldn't find a receiver, finally took off running. First down gets their backs off the wall and brings it out to the 20 yard line. Going to roll right in trouble. Now he's going to go down. Didn't Ryan the, Rieger. Didn't get uh, free from that time. Ryan did a great job stepping across with good speed, and but still no. under control and discipline, right? That was Michael Horton. Oh, Michael Horton. Yeah, 51, not 50. I apologize to crew Horton over there to my right. Yeah. They're, they're a scary crew. <laughs> you know. But fortunately, they don't have earbuds in, so I, we're I, safe. I think Jerry's probably at home listening to it, and he'd give me heck at Rosenberg's tomorrow otherwise. And so that was Horton with his first sack of the night, and the loss goes all the way back to the 15-yard line. Loss of eight on the play. About two-thirds of what uh, Pruitt gained on a scramble. Second down and 18. Pruitt the only back in the backfield at quarterback in the shotgun set. Two deep safeties. Everhart goes in motion left to right, and they're going to pitch to him. He hesitates. Now he's going to try to get to the outside. Gets around the corner, but picks up about seven or eight before he's run out of bounds. Back to the line of scrimmage. as they Everhart, The original Trey line Everhart. of scrimmage is Trey Everhart. as uh, Valley Catholic is Sort of playing lose seven, gain seven. It'll be uh, just short. It'll be about the 20-yard line, so he'll get about seven back as the cheesemakers. Put Valley into a third and long. It's going to be third and 12 situation from their own 20. Cheesemakers wanting to get a stop right here. Wide receiver to the right and to the left. Motion right to left. Going to pitch sweep to the outside. Cheesemakers on him. Going to take him down. Well, you got to be careful pursuing pretty hard right there. Took him down and 
threw a shoe off as well. As, uh, can't tell. I think that shoe came off Macias, but he's quickly right back up on it. And the loss goes all the way back to the 15, and it's fourth down, and Valley's going to have to kick the ball away. Lost the six yards that they gained. They've had a lot of uh, cheesemaker defense, a lot of big plays for loss already tonight. Bill McLeod's 14 to nothing, nine and a half left to play in the first half. From his own two-yard line, the punter goes back and kicks it away. Go over the head of both return men, all the way across midfield, all the way down to the 30-yard line. That ball from the 15 goes, let's see, 58 yards. And then he was he punted it from the two. You can mark yeah. the line of scrimmage if you want. but That was 72 yards from where he kicked it. That's a pretty good, pretty good foot right there. And so the cheesemakers thought they were going to get great field position as both deep men were at the 50. Ball goes over their head, and it ends up at the 27 on this turf field. Great turf field here at Valley. At what point do you throw a little reverse uh, throwback right there, right? Because everybody's flown so hard. And do you throw that back at some point? These makers have two guys in the backfield, both Silveras. Matt's going to hand off to Chris. Makes a cut in the backfield. He's going to go down. He took down, was taken down by Fleming, that 6'7", 275-pounder. And he's a little bit slow getting up, although Matt's going to drag him off the ground and say, come on, get after it. Back into the huddle he goes. Lost the three on the play. Yeah, Chris had to make a decision uh, about two yards behind the line of scrimmage which way he was going to go. And there weren't a lot of good options. Valley came hard with everybody that time. So you read and react and adjust accordingly, right? Second down and 13. Yes, you do. There's nothing you can't work through here. I mean, Valley is, is not a superior ball club to tell them look. Shotgun set, straight back to throw. Going to throw right, a little cross inside. Boomer with a catch for about a five-yard gain and then taken down nicely by the defensive back there, George uh, Eisenhart. Eisenhart, a 6'2", 180-pound sophomore, came up and made the play, but a nice throw and catch by Matt Silvera. They're going to say incomplete pass. Oh, he dropped it. My fault. Huh. I thought he wrapped. I thought he wrapped that up and I thought took he it did down. Too. So it'll bring up third and thirteen. As the cheesemakers will look to throw the ball again on third and thirteen. They run the same set they ran last time. That's three receivers to the right side. This one they ran that little draw back with Silvera. They've got their eye on Silvera this time. This time Matt's going to roll to the right and look right. He throws down the field to Shelley. It's complete. No, it's Warner. It's Warner. It is Caleb Warner that will get the first down on a very nicely thrown by ball by Matt Silvera. Delivers for a 15-yard gain. And the Cheesemakers move the chains on third down again as they have been pretty methodical. Well, that was a really patient throw by Matt. Yeah. Like he rolled out, and there was no sense of panic. Um, there wasn't a huge amount of pressure, but I've seen Matt make hurried decisions and then go to go to the safe, go to the yeah. go to the safe spot. That wasn't the safe. That was the deepest of the three routes that were run to his right side, the side that he rolled out to, and he threw a really nice ball. And Caleb did a great job washing it into his belly. They're going to hand off this time to Macias. He slips in the backfield and kind of crawls ahead for about three. As Macias on the right side uh, took a cut off the outside of the left foot and went down, but kept himself up enough so he didn't t- touch a uh, knee, an elbow, or a nose. And the cheesemakers get two more yards out of that than they probably should have. Yeah, I did. His, his plant foot sl- totally slipped out from underneath him. The big guy checks out. Fleming is, needs to have a break. I think his first break in quite a while, if yeah. not the whole night. He's probably on punt and kickoff team. Seven, oh. oh, he's got a little injury. Yeah. Got dinged. His hand, looks like, seven and a half minutes left to play in the first half. Cheesemakers come to the line of scrimmage, and I think Tillamook's going to ask for timeout. 7.15 left to play in the half. 14 to nothing. Cheesemakers over Valley. We'll be back in one minute. Welcome back to Cheesemaker football. It's going to be second down and eight for the Cheesemakers as the ball's at the 42-yard line. Why did we have two offensive linemen run off the field right there? Both Johnson and Rieger came off the field. And 
guys, after the timeout. Guys over on the sideline talking to the official, trying to get an understanding of what's going on and maybe who can be in the ball game. As, uh, and, uh, yeah, I'm guessing it has Hagen, to be. It's an equipment issue, would be my guess, that they were told that they had to get off the field. So now they're going to huddle up as the one-minute timeout stretches far past that. As so it is an equipment issue. So uh, Tyson O'Hagan and Joe Bentley step in to uh, cover up Johnson yeah. and Rieger. Odd that you'd have two equipment issues simultaneously coming out of a timeout. Uh, yeah. Unless it's a blood issue. I don't know. Second down and eight, Cheesemakers. They're going to pitch sweep to the near side. It's going to be coming up to the outside out across the 40 to the 45-yard line and out of bounds. And that was uh, Raleigh Mendez. Mendez into the ball game. Couldn't come up with a name, but new player as Raleigh Mendez will pick up about three on the carry. Takes it out to the 46, maybe four on the carry. It's going to be third down and four for the Cheesemakers. So there was all kinds of confusion on and that. And all things considered, it was actually a really positive outcome. Yeah. Right? So you, you've, got <laughs> I mean, your, you've got your fourth string running back running behind um, only 60% of your starting line. And the Cheesemakers get everybody back in that they want now on third down and four. Silvera, hands in the backfield. Next cut right, cut left. Going to try to get to the line, and it's close. As the Cheesemakers. Oh, Valley Catholic wants to know how come I got peeled off the top of the pile. And they're going to mark it short. Yep. Short by just about a yard. Going to bring up fourth down and one, and I think Telemuth's going to go for it. They haven't punted the ball yet tonight. As Silvera made a nice move in the backfield just to get ahead. That's yeah, Chris. Just too much density right there. There's too much traffic. Valley Catholic has the near side officials here talking about peeling kids off the top of the pile. Yeah, and that, that might have been justified. Don't let go shotgun on fourth and short. Big play here. Will the cheesemakers try to run a play or try to get them to jump offside? Motion goes Caleb Warner. He stops. He's going to go straight ahead. First down, cheesemakers. Yep, ran right in behind Caleb. Yep, Caleb Warner, the up back, stopped in the motion, went straight ahead, made the block. Chris Silvera right behind him. Picks up the first down plus a yard or two past that. And the cheesemakers have moved the chains again halfway through the second period of play. That's the 11th carry for Chris so far tonight, 83 yard, 86 yards, check that, um, of, of offenses. He's been the workhorse. Horse. Luis Macias has four carries for 13 yards. Caleb Boomer, two carries for five. Messiah has two, and Mendez has four. As it's been a, a run a run dominant performance here. But have also thrown the ball effectively when they've had to. Two for two. Caleb Warner motion across the formation. Left to right. Hesitates there. And now they're going to throw the ball here. Has Warner open in the oh, flat. Woo! Nice catch up in the air to get it. Goes down the field. Going to get about seven on the play. That, that was ball a great was, catch. That ball was thrown high and hot. But Caleb Warner went up and snapped it out of the air and got about seven more than he probably should have on the throw. Nice reception by Caleb Warner, and the Cheesemakers get a nice first down play and bring up second down and three. Ball's down to the 41 now of Valley. Uh, That was a good play call because it was the same exact set that they ran on fourth down to pick up one, and this time instead of Caleb going down to block, he ran out into the flat. And so now now next time he comes in motion, Valley goes, well, what what are they doing? Are they they going to run the ball behind their, their block, or is he going into the flat? And, that, and that's where you can train a defense to react a certain way and then use that training against them later on in the, in the football game. One back in the backfield behind Macias. He's going to break to the left side, gets heavy penetration, then down he goes. Cheesemaker's going to lose a couple of yards. Chris Silvera that time. Great penetration by Elston from uh, Valley as he stepped across and really forced uh, Chris's, hand to, uh, Chris's hand to make a decision as to what's going to happen next and uh, ran right into the arms of Valley. Third down and five now for the Cheesemakers. I'm looking for some misdirection here shortly because, again, Valley, as they start to flow really hard, um, become susceptible. as yep. Their backside linebacker starting to make some plays on the onside. 428 left to play in the half, 14 to nothing, Cheesemakers. In the ball game for the Cheesemakers at the tight end is Sam Conley. Conley moves up, gets that motion, and the Cheesemakers... Conley, I believe, is going to get whistled. Well, that's on Matt because he saw that there was a little confusion as yeah. to whether Sam needed to be on the line or, or off the line. And uh, Caleb uh, Warner moved Sam up onto the line, and then Matt didn't give him enough time to get set. 
He has to be set for a full second before somebody else goes in motion. And so all Matt has to do is just delay. Yeah, one just, more count. He just has to stop the count and allow that just to settle. So now it takes, makes third down a little bit tougher, third down and 10 now, as the ball comes back to the 48-yard line. As Tillamook will break the huddle and come to the line of scrimmage again. Third down and 10, you're, uh, if you pick up five, six, you're going to go for it. I don't know if, if this is an incomplete pass. I'm not so certain you don't punt. Got a hand on the draw. Silvera cuts left, cuts right, not going to get enough, although he gets about three more than he should have, which is just three. And so it's going to be fourth down and seven for the Cheesemakers, and I would expect they're going to kick the ball away. Well, we'll see if you've got a, uh, a pooch kick in your, uh, in your repertoire. And they are going to move Boomer back to punt formation. This will be the first punt of the night for the Cheesemakers with a 14 to nothing lead. And they've really dominated most of this ball game. It maybe could be more than 14 to nothing. High snap, but Boomer goes up and gets it and then almost has it blocked. Low line drive kick. Going to oh, be go down inside up. the five and stop at about the four, and the cheesemakers are going to have it there. That thing turned its right turn signal on and about the five-yard line and just set her down. So deep in their own territory, Valley will take over as the cheesemakers got down and downed it. At the four, it was rolling end over end. Everhart came up looking to field it, but it was uh, bouncing like a football, not a basketball, and he let it go. Well, that was weird because uh, Valley had a shift change on right there just before the snap was uh, was pulled. and uh, Then had a really good chance to block the punt. Yeah, and then they did. They had a really good shot. as The, the snap wasn't great, and uh, it was a line drive punt that uh, didn't really hit anybody, and, and uh, Everhart couldn't step up and make the play. That's a kid's dangerous in, in open field. So it was nice to see him step away from that football instead of stepping into it. So the ball back at their own three-yard line. First down with 3.15 left to play in the first half. Second Four. possession in a row that started inside the 10. Snap going to hand off left side. Hit in the backfield, but then gets out. About to the line of scrimmage. Not much more. Carrying the ball that time. Uh, your guess is as good as That's mine. Bagley. That was a whole bunch of people getting off the bottom of the pile at the same time. Short game, They'll say almost game no gain on the, on the play, maybe down. a half a yard is all. It was second down. Well, yeah, that's a total nine. win. That's a total win, first down and ten from the three-yard line Oh yeah, <laughs> for the defense. Yeah, you, you, start, you start to get nervous, and what happens is you feel like you can't throw the ball when you're this deep because of all the negative outcomes. And so you're really dictating what the offense has an opportunity to be able to pursue. One back in the backfield behind Pruitt, the quarterback. Going to roll left this time. Under pressure in the backfield. Going to get around the corner. Out across the 10 to the 15. Taken down at the 18-yard line and gets the first down. That turned into a one-on-one competition between Pruitt and Nemi. And Nemi just doesn't, as a sophomore, doesn't quite have the athleticism that Pruitt has on the corner. Juked him a little bit going in and just got around the corner. Cheesemakers lost containment. One of the cardinal rules. And gave up the first down. And Bally gets their backs off the wall again. They did that the last time around, and then the cheesemakers got a little bit tougher. It'll be first down at the 18, their own 18. Quarterback in the shotgun, oh, takes oh. right, mixed up. Now he's going to run it on his own. Coming near side, now going to look down the field and just runs it out of bounds. And uh, that's the difference between uh, Luis Macias and Miguel Nemi. Yeah. Lu- Luis Macias is a senior athlete. Miguel will get there. Miguel will absolutely be the senior athlete that's able to chase down an athletic quarterback and shove him out of bounds. Just not yet. He's only 15. He's a young sophomore. Miguel, uh, excuse me, Luis has, has, got, has got the juice Miguel to take. And same type of situation. That was a broken play where Pruitt uh, faked the handoff to the right, but everybody else went left, and then he started to run around the corner, and Macias, just too much speed, ran him out of bounds for a loss of three on the play. Pretty close to a late hit, though. I think he gave, yeah. him, he gave him a little shove. I think Pruitt had pretty well obviously giving himself up, and Luis just wanted to make certain that uh, Pruitt had a chance to grab a hot dog in the confession stand if he wanted one. That's about how far he went. Went over to the test, oh. ball loose in the backfield and down. Pruitt wrapped up and thrown down back inside the five by Macias, or Messiah, one of the two. But again, ball was on the turf right there. The carpet was unkind. Quarterback sacked by number seven. It was also Nemi back in on that. So the loss is going to go all the way back to the five. So a loss of uh, 11 yards, 10 yards on that at least. Yep. 
and it'll bring up third down and over 20. They've got to come out. Back where they about where they just received the punt. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's and about the five-yard line. And that's a first down to go. Minute 25 left and counting. If cheesemakers get a stop here, they'll probably call a timeout. They're just going to run the ball, and Everhart with a big hole up the middle. Goes out across the 20 and gets taken down by, oh, oh, oh. Nice carry by Valley, or by the cheesemakers as uh, a late hit there on Chris Silvera. I, I don't think it was maybe as hard as he gets yeah, credit yeah, for. Zeke, Zeke, Zeke sold that one pretty good. And Tillamook will ask for timeout. A big run by Everhart takes it all the way out to the 22, but it's still short of the first down as he picks up 17 on the play. Little halfback draw with a minute 12 left to play in the half. Cheesemakers call the timeout, trying to stop the clock and get the ball back. Chris did a really nice job at chopping uh, Everhart down. As uh, he had come through the line of scrimmage, there were no linebackers left. Uh, the free safety's responsibility is is it make the play. That's yeah. what you got to do. And he did. A, Chris did a really nice job of uh, choosing to go low, but not so early that Everhart could react and adjust. And, and so uh, a really sweet tackle right there in uh, the situation. One twelve left to play in the half. We have a halftime guest, Jeremy Lyon. I think you're going to want to listen to this. Such an interesting uh, guy as Jeremy was the superintendent down in Coos Bay for many years, and then he was the superintendent here in Hillsboro before moving down to Austin, Texas, and then up to Frisco, Texas, and has a really interesting uh, background experience football-wise down there, talking about Texas football tonight. I haven't told him what we're going to talk about. <laughs> Been a friend for a long time, really a great guy, and I'm anxious to talk to him at half well, he, don't go he, away. Hey, he's treated you well. So he man, has. Just make certain that you uh, keep the kid gloves on. All he right? has treated me well. Punt formation, good snap. Hunter's going to kick it away. It's going to be Chris Silvera at the 50. Oh, no. He drops it. Loose on the ground, still loose on the ground, and the cheesemakers got back Boy, on it. Chris did a great job of he actually is the one that stripped the football away from the Valley kid that came through and picked the ball up as it went through his arm. And uh, the only reason that Valley doesn't have the ball at the 49-yard line is the fact that Chris knocked it out of his hands. Cheesemakers had three other bodies around. Valley had a couple Hunter, shots Hunter, at it, but the cheesemakers Hunter. come back, and that was kind of the turning point of last week's ball game when Tillamook muffed a punt. Yep. Yeah, it was. And uh, I think Chris had pretty big ideas on that. He was able to come up and really feel that ball going about 80% speed. And I think yeah. he had visions of being able to make a play and uh, just got ahead of himself by a step and a half. We'll see if the cheesemakers can get anything going here before the half. They'll turn and hand on a little slot reverse inside Chris Silvera across midfield down to the 43-yard line. And will the cheesemakers call a timeout or keep going? They'll keep going. They come to the line of scrimmage right away with 50 seconds left, running their hurry-up offense. Dean, Mc, uh, not Dean, that would be <laughs> his, his son. That would be a recruiting violation. That would be. Hand off right side, Macias. Or, excuse me, uh, Silvera. Silvera breaks the tackle with the 45 and then goes out of bounds at the 40 to stop the clock, and he gets the first down as well. First down carry, number 30. I don't think Dean has the wheels that uh, is required to, to do this. So he, he would talk you into submission, but I don't think he could run away from you. I coached Dean many, many years ago, uh, Dawson's dad. So Dawson will go back into the huddle, and Tillamook will set the offense again. Matt Silvera goes over and talks to... Ty Johnson, you know, one of the things we haven't seen in a long time is that uh, halfback or split in reverse I was, pass. I to was just thinking that. Kellen Shelley threw Kellen it once. Kellen Shelley. He threw it once. And the cheesemakers. He's not in the game right now. Three receivers on the near side. Going to roll left to throw. Getting pressure, going to throw down the field. It is complete to Werner, but short of the first down. And I think Kellen's going to have to use a timeout. Not they the do not. Caleb Warner. 20 seconds left in counting. Trying to get into field goal range. We saw a 44-yarder two weeks ago. These makers get set. 11 seconds left. They'll hand off. Macias in the backfield going to be taken down. They rolled the dice, and the team makers going to have to call timeout. As the ball now back at the 36-yard line. That would be a 52-yard field goal. 44 was the field goal that Matt, that uh, Tanner Richardson kicked two weeks ago. But that's ago. exactly what they're trying to do. That's exactly what that's they're exactly trying to do. exactly what they're trying to do. They're trying to get that ball down about the 26, 27-yard line. Trying to make it a three-score game, and instead they're going to be at the 36, 
with just six seconds remaining. Don't know that they have enough time to run two plays here. Uh, not if they I don't. Uh, no, not with six seconds. To get the 44-yarder, they need to get to the 27. That would be uh, about nine yards. And so five seconds. You could run a short down and out maybe in less than five. Oh, boy. You got to catch it and be with, out of with bounds. N, with NFL speed, but we got Warner speed, yeah. which is on yeah. a different level. Probably not. So we'll see what Tillamook has pulling out of their hat on the far side. Well, you know, what we we're hoping. Kellen is lined up in the slot on the far side, on the wide side. He is. He's also a 6'3 receiver. Oh, all right. Well said. Could be going down the field. Silvera going to roll right and look for the Hail Mary. Now he's in trouble. Going to flip it out into the flats and throw it away, and that's the end of the first half of play. A good first half it was as the Cheesemakers lead it 14 to nothing at the half. We're going to take a one-minute break. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Cheesemaker Football in halftime where the Tillamook Cheesemakers lead 14 to nothing. Oh, my. There's, there's, there's some PA that we didn't quite expect. <laughs> as, uh, where that's going to make us start dancing here pretty soon. Cheesemakers lead 14 to nothing over the uh, Valley Catholic Valiants. Cheesemakers scored on their first possession of the ball, went 69 yards in 10 plays. Five and a half minutes off the clock. Big play on that drive was Kellen. Uh, Shelley with a 20-yard reception along with three first downs by way of penalty. And then the with 30 seconds left in the first period, Chris Silvera went in from 23 yards out. The extra point was good on both those. That second drive was 51 yards in five plays set up by a fumble recovery at about midfield. And the Cheesemakers have a 14 to nothing lead. The second quarter was pretty much a stalemate between the two teams. Cheesemakers won the battle in field position but could not stick it into the end zone. Defense have done a nice job so far tonight, and the Cheesemakers have control of this game right now, 14 to nothing. and they said it before the game, if they could get to the second half even, they probably have the, the chance because Valley is running a lot of kids both ways. Cheesemakers uh, should be much more fresh in the second half, but we'll see how it plays out as the Cheesemakers and Valiant square off. We have a halftime guest. We're going to come back and talk to Jeremy Lyon after this one-minute break. Welcome back to Cheesemaker Football in halftime. Cheesemakers lead 14 to nothing. Randy Shield along with Nathan Radcliffe, your broadcast crew over FM 95.9 KTIL in Tillamook. Special halftime guest, Jeremy Lyons. Jeremy's been a friend for a long time, and I already gave you a rundown leading up to the fact that uh, he's here after being a superintendent in Oregon in a couple places, served with him on the OSAA executive board, and then. Uh, you moved down to to Austin first, right. and then up to Frisco, right. Texas. I've had the opportunity to visit you down there, Jeremy. High school football. We've always heard about Texas high school football. It's every bit as real as they make it out to be, isn't it? You know, it really is. It's a, it's a big deal down there. There's no doubt about it. But um, you know, I spent nine years in Oregon as a school superintendent, and Oregon football is just as fun, just as good, and in a lot of ways serves the communities in a real authentic way that maybe some of that glitz and glamour of Texas doesn't. So. You know, you talk about glitz and glamour. Some of the districts around you, uh, yeah. stadiums they built were as big as, unbelievable. Uh, uh, unbelievable. So you see games down there where they are putting thousands, thousands of their stadiums. Thousands. And, uh, when, during my tenure in Frisco, of course, we worked with the Dallas Cowboys and built partnered with them on the practice facility where our high school kids got to play in this indoor stadium where the Dallas Cowboys practice. And the kids are very appreciative of that. It's all about participation as it is here in Oregon. And really everything that you do is to try to incentivize and encourage students to participate and have healthy experiences and activities. Jeremy, you've had such great opportunities after leaving Oregon going back to uh, Texas. Yeah. That partnership with the Cowboys, yeah. I, I don't think most people have any idea how big that was. When 
when the Cowboys on TV talk about the star, their new facility, that was in partnership with you right next to your or right in your district. And that partnership, uh, what did you as a school district benefit from in that way? Well, you know, public-private partnerships get some criticism, uh, deservedly. But if you if you set them up where there are uh, things that the school district wants to do that they were going to do anyway, we we were in need of building a stadium anyway, so that was going to happen. But then when you put in the whole Dallas Cowboys part on that, and you're not spending any more money than you would have originally, then it's a big win. And by the way, speaking of the Cowboys. I noticed Tillamook can go for it on fourth down, but the Cowboys can't. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, this, this is a problem. No, no, you you do have some problems. I know yeah. that you're you're, yes. all, you're also friends with the Jones family. That's a whole different culture they have down there. Football is as serious a business as you can get. It it is it is a very serious business, especially at the professional level. Uh, but you know, it's it's um, the real heart and soul of the Jones family is they're football fans yeah. and they love football. They love to see kids participating at every level. All their grandkids participate, all of them. And uh, it, it was fun to work with them and get to know them, but it sure is great to be back out here on this beautiful night, um, watching the cheesemakers do a really bang up job. Well, they've taken done, it to the Valiant. Done a nice job so far yeah. tonight. Uh, yeah. Your son actually played for Valley Catholic, won a he state did. championship he did. in basketball, and uh, yet you're still here sitting in the Telemuk section Absolutely. rooting for the cheesemakers. Got to appreciate that. I have tremendous uh, respect and pride. <laughs> you know, the, the other thing that really struck me when I was down there with you was uh, football's big. Uh, bands in halftime might oh, be just goodness. as big. Oh, my goodness. Uh, out of control. I mean, it's, <laughs> they laugh and say football's out of control. Well, you haven't seen the band programs down there. And, uh, you know, just I, I think it's great. Uh, I think that, like everything else, there should be limits to it. And uh, they have, uh, Every school I saw had yep. a huge semi-trailer yep. with their band insignia on the side. Right. And half times were like a half an hour long because both bands had to play. Both bands have to play. Half times are typically 30, 35 minutes. And um, it's really something. It's, um, you know, it's the, the kids take great pride in it. And I'll tell you, those band kids work as hard yep. as the football players in terms of practicing and performance and getting their routines down. It's, it is quite a spectacle. There's no doubt about it. I know you're in one of the fastest growing districts in the state, or excuse me, uh, districts in the nation. Right. In Frisco, you right. built several high schools in the time when you were there. Yep. Uh, I was impressed by the fact that every one of your high schools had an indoor turf facility yep. for a combination of the band and football teams. Yeah, it's, uh, y- you know, all of those facilities built with bonds supported by the yeah. community, and um, they made a conscious decision um, as the growth in Frisco was uh, happening in the 80s that they were going to uh, commit to these quality high school models that included these kinds of facilities, and the community wanted that. They supported it. And they set high expectations, and, and it's, a, it's great for the kids. It provides a very safe environment in so many ways for uh, students to participate in all the different activities. So I've, I've heard stories of uh, Texas football and how out of whack it got for a while where right. head football coaches were making more than <laughs> you know, superintendents right. and anybody in town and so right. forth. Right. They've kind of gotten a handle on that now, haven't they? They, they have. They have. Um, it's a... You know, just like in Oregon, where I, I watch extraordinary coaches uh, do great things with kids regarding character development, teamwork, and those kinds of things, that's the same. When you get a, a quality coach, it doesn't matter the size of the school district or the school or the program. When you get a quality coach, great things happen for, for those kids. And, and typically, uh, you see winning records. Um, but when you, you know, there was a period when I think there was an overemphasis on winning in Texas high school football. Yeah. And I do believe that it's kind of come back towards more of a focus on character development, teamwork, and those important lessons that give kids opportunities. I appreciate you saying that, Jeremy. I actually had a conversation with our head coach, Kai Johnson, on the field before this game. And it's so hard for a head coach 
especially a young head coach, right. to to end up valuing themselves based on wins and losses. And yes. in reality, as you are in this longer, you value the job you've done based on the relationships you've built with kids. And Absolutely. The, what you've taught them about being young men that's right. or women, if that's the case. Right. And uh, there, it takes you a while to get that perspective in. It does. And being a football coach, you know, uh, in, especially at the high school level, is a young man's game yeah. primarily. And so you're watching these educators on this learning curve, and it is a learning curve. And so the maturity level that we have in regards to what we're looking at as school administrators is different for them. And it takes some, a good mentor and a good superintendent who can point out what is important and stand behind them when it's not going so great on the wins and losses, but they're doing the right things and they're, they're treating the kids with respect and, and giving them a great um, experience. Was there any more pressure on you as a superintendent down in Frisco than there was here in Hillsboro as far as how your teams did wins and losses and, and community pressure? Or is that pretty much consistent across the nation? Um, it is consistent across the nation. I was so proud of our Frisco athletic director who, whose motto was, you know, when you play one of us, any one of our high schools down there, you play all of us. And that extended to we wanted to see those football players be there at the volleyball games cheering the girls in volleyball. We expected them to be at the baseball playoffs. And so you build this culture where the kids are supporting one another regardless of the sport. And that really, really is powerful for, for a program. You know, the other piece, Jeremy, I'll, I'll try not to get on my high horse because I could <laughs> get there quickly, is the old uh, year-round one-sport athlete right. question that I'm Ooh. sure you face in Texas, it, yeah. maybe more so than you face yeah. here. But the fact that kids are expected to right. uh, be in a single sport and yeah. do that year-round, and that's really in almost all cases not best for kids. It's not best for kids, and that is a true, genuine problem that we have right now in your bigger programs because the pressure is to focus on that program, and you repeatedly hear if, if you're not working your sport 365 days a year, you're falling behind somebody else who's going to take your place. Yep. That is a very nonproductive and dangerous attitude when, you, when it comes to high school participation. And those well-rounded programs, they encourage kids to participate in all sports. That is a number one problem that we face right now. And, Randy, you know, you and I served on OSAA together, yep. and that was just an incredible experience. OSAA has so much to be proud of because yep. they never lose sight of what's important in regards to school athletics and activities. And it was such an honor to serve with you and with the OSAA staff and work on these issues for those years. Jeremy, you and I had the opportunity to sit and uh, decide, I guess, <laughs> when we went from a four-class system, four classifications to a six-class yes. system. Huge amount of controversy in that. Yes. Yet here we sit, right. uh, 12, 14, 16, I don't know how many years yep. it's been. Yep. A long time ago, yep. it's still in a six-class system. Every right. year there's maybe arguments or challenges against that, right. and yet it's a competitive balance, which was our key focus at that time that seems yeah. to have won out. Yep. And I guess the test of time says that was probably a good idea for most. Absolutely. And you, you, that competitive balance is so important, especially in sports like football. Yep. And, um, you know, the fact of the matter is it has held the test of time. And states like Texas continue to face that problem. And you know what their solution is? is to do the same thing that we did years ago, and that is to continue to expand the classifications all in the name of competitive equity and balance. So kids, kids have a good experience. Yeah, and yeah. that's what it's all about. Very right. few of these kids are ever going to go on to the collegiate level, and Correct. almost none will ever go on to the professional level. Right. And yet they're all going to go on to be young men that, that hopefully are productive pieces of our society. Exactly. And, and that's what it's truly about. It is. It is. Jeremy, I appreciate you yep. taking the time to come up and talk to us at halftime. Uh, always a, always good to see you. Love to have you up here. Absolutely. And uh, appreciate your insight. And uh, you promised me a salmon fishing trip in return I, for this interview. At least yes? one. There we go. All <laughs> right. Thank you, Randy. <laughs> Jeremy Lyon uh, here on KTL Radio. Hill McLeeds, 14 to nothing over the Valley Catholic Valiants. We'll be back with the stats in the start of the second half after this.
Welcome back to Cheesemaker Football. Tillamook leads 14 to nothing at the half. Nate, how'd we get here? Well, not through Texas. <laughs> not through Texas, <laughs> I'll tell you. I've shown you pictures yes. and told you stories of what goes yeah. on down there. It is a different world, facility-wise. Mentality. Unbelievable. Athleticism. Uh, unbelievable. Yeah. It's, uh, what, he, what we didn't have a time to talk about was, uh, you know, the Dallas Star. That's their professional right. soccer team. That's the stadium that his teams played in before they moved to the uh, Star, which is now the Cowboys facility. They have their own suite in there uh, all the time. It's just a complete different world yeah, and a great quality of athleticism. Just in the same way, uh, Texans can't imagine fishing for salmon. No, that's true. Right? They're like, oh, my God, that's a totally different world, isn't yep. it? But yeah, no, It is just that different. Things that are different. You know, Tillamook got 15 plays and 120 yards in the first quarter, and we talked about how we'd take that again. Well, we got 13 plays in the second quarter. you got to like that. But we only got 51 net yards. Wow. And only 17 of those were on the ground. Threw the ball for 34 yards, uh, 17 on the ground. So, uh, offensively, there was a lot of uh, forward three yards, back two yards, forward yep. four yards, back two yards uh, type stuff. Fortunately, on the VC side, they uh, got 10 plays uh, as well in uh, the first quarter and the second quarter. But they only had a net 25 yards in the second quarter. And so it turned into a little bit of a dog fight in a, uh, in a phone booth there in the second quarter as uh, it was not a horribly clean uh, second offensive quarter. Uh, Chris Rivera ran the ball 97 yards on 15 carries. And so you can talk, you can throw whatever shade you want. Um, the kid had 82 yards at the end of the first quarter, put up 15 more in the uh, second quarter and is well on his way to getting uh, 100 plus. Caleb Boomer has two carries for five yards. Uh, Z- uh, Luis Macias has nine, excuse me, five carries for nine yards. I can get that out. Messiah has carried the ball once for two. Uh, Brawley Mendez has a carry for four. Uh, Caleb Warner has done a really nice job catching the ball. He caught all three bo- balls in the second quarter. He caught an eight, a seven, and a nine-yard pass. That's 34 total yards on his three catches. And then Kellen Shelley has the one ball in the first quarter for 20 yards. As uh, Tillamook has uh, really established themselves as the better offensive team, and they're going to receive the football to start the third quarter, which is a pretty good combination of outcomes. So the cheesemakers will be on the right side of your radio dial, and they're all white uniforms with a red number, and they'll be returning the second-half kick. Now, I do want the record to show that Rex Metcalf was a judge for the chili cook-off for the second year in a row. Is that right? Yes. You know, they had 30 different chilies that you could uh, – and, and free hot dogs. And free hot dogs. Cooked it, by the principal. It's amazing. There we go. Although, they might not fortunately, be. you didn't get a chance to I, test 30 no, no. different chilies. The Rex did, though. <laughs> sorry, Rochelle. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And Rex. Sorry, Rex. Hope, hope Rex drove out alone. <laughs> These makers will get back. No, I hope Greg English rode with them. <laughs> oh, there you perfectly go. perfectly honest, right? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, see, that's red. Uh, Cheesemakers will go back. His kicking will be uh, back blue, a 5'11", 165-pound sophomore. He'll kick high end over end, going to be fielded by Boomer at the 20. Straight back in the seam left side, cut down at the 33, and that's where the Cheesemakers will take over. So the opening drive of the second half, as Boomer a little bit slow getting up again. He's been that way two or three times tonight. See several times tonight where uh, players from the opposing team will help the others up, give them a pat on the shoulder, and off they go. It's been a very well-played game sportsmanship-wise between these two teams. So the cheesemakers will come out. We'll see if they try to take the ball straight at Valley Catholic and uh, earn some dominance at the line of scrimmage. These Meckers in the shotgun set with Matt Silver hands the ball to Chris. Chris, little seam right side, going to pick up a couple yards and then get okay. rolled backwards. He'll go out across the 35 to the 36 yard line, gain a two on the play, second down and eight. Cheese Meckers. Dawson did a really nice job of turning Fleming right there. Oh, uh, and that's really all. You're not going to move him. No, you just got to turn him, and he did. He just turned him uh, to the to the radio box side of the field, and uh, Chris ran right off Dawson's rear end, and that's exactly what you want out of your lineman. Turn. 6'7", 265 on the nose guard. Second down and eight. Going to throw right side on a quick hitch. Didn't get the block made. Going to go down in the backfield. Be a loss of three, make it four. As Boomer made the catch, but the cheesemakers didn't make a block. And it's third down and long. So Valley in their final home game this year. You can expect them to be 
coming out ready to play in the second half. Yeah, they're going to have they, they got a reason to compete. There's yes, no they doubt do. about it. They have the same reason Tillamook has. A playoff spot on the line, yep. potentially. As the Cheesemakers come to the line of scrimmage, third down and 11. Tillamook really dominated the first quarter, mm-hmm. won the second quarter, but did not win on the scoreboard, and it's 14 to nothing. Third and 11. Back to throw. Silvera, right side, caught by Zeke Kuhn, and then down he goes immediately. Nice job defensively by that corner again, the sophomore, and the Cheesemakers going to have to kick the ball away. Last time they kicked. It was a bit rugged. Yeah, it was a high snap and then like a sib up the middle and somehow and Boomer was, got the ball away. These makers, they do not, Valley does not get a guy off the field and there's a flag down. Ball bounces and picked up by Everhart. Everhart going to be uh, down at the 19-yard line. They won't take line. that penalty. They'll decline I, that penalty. No, I think you decline it because you're going to have fourth down and about two. At the 42. Again, the Valley, for the second time, couldn't get their punt team straight. Last time, they only had nine guys on the punt squad, and they were running two on. And this time, they had 12 guys on the punt squad yeah. running one off. It's a math problem. Illegal substitution, too many men on the field, and they'll have to ask Tillamook if they accept it or not. The line of scrimmage was the 37, so it would come out to the 42, and it would be two yards short of the first down. The net yards on the punt were 10, 20, 30, 45 yards. That's about as good as you can hope it's, for. It's hard to say no. I say you wave this off and move to defense and play the field position game unless you're going to go for it. Oh, no, yeah, no, 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 no. If you think you can you can go for it on fourth and, and two from the 42, you're going to do it. And, and uh, coach says, no, I'll play defense. Yep. So the ball's at the 20. Because, you know, remember, Valley has only 88 yards in 20 snaps. And I believe they're going to have a five-yard penalty on top of that. Oh, so, so you that, get the penalty yard. It's just that, a matter of where. That huh. doubles it down. See, now that changes. That even makes it an easier decision. No, so goes back to the 14, and the cheesemakers accept the penalty, penalty. at the end Charging of the down. kick. That was what the discussion was about. Yep. Where do you want the yard? Right not do you want the yard? And the cheesemakers. But that was not the drive that Tillamook wanted to have to open up the third quarter, right? Not at all. Pruitt, the quarterback and shotgun set, going to turn and hand to Everhart. Goes left, goes right, breaks the tackle in the backfield, now goes ahead out to about the 20. He gets five more there than he should have. Yeah, because he did. He went left, he went right, he went left, he went right. All in the backfield, and then he moved forward and ended up picking up the five yards. It'll be second down and five for Valley Catholic. Just underway here in the second half. 48 yards on seven carries for Everhart. Who did not start the game, but I no. believe that was a, uh, a senior senior night exchange. The only back in the backfield, Everhart, will get the handoff to the left side. Cuts back against the grain, straight up the middle, and gets the first down. Tommy Cruz, first down. Tommy Cruz gets Everhart. the tackle. Across the 25 to about the 27. And so, at times, Valley has looked like they moved the ball very easily, and then they've had a tendency to make mistakes. These makers. I, I right now don't like the feel of this game for some reason. It's a game that it feels like you could dominate and still lose. We'll see. <laughs> That's a horrible situation, I know it. isn't it? Pruitt hollers out to a split end on the right side as he changes the play at the line of scrimmage. Look at the split between nose guard and tackle defensively. Going to hand off Everhart straight up the middle, sidesteps one, and then goes down. Nice Run. play there. And you can, and you can do carry. that if your linebackers make Check plays that. like that, but the problem is it was four yards past the line of scrimmage because Caleb uh, Warner was sitting back. So Warner makes a stop. Out of the ball game comes Perry Reeder. As into the ball game comes, uh, well, looks like Cameron. Uh, yeah, Cameron Fuller. Buffin. Buffin, excuse me, Cameron Buffin. Second down and eight, and there's a flag. Somebody, I think, moved. <coughs> Cameron is a new transfer. Uh, last weekend was his first game. Okay. He's. Uh, I, I introduced myself to him, and uh, he nearly crushed my hand. Oh, really? Because I wanted to know how to pronounce his last name, which, by the way, I just got wrong. I know that. I, 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 I can hear that. But seriously, he, he nearly rang blood out of my fingertips. <laughs> I thought, you know what? You got a job as like a, a like a like a like you could crack almonds, you know? Like you've got a job someplace, son. If if everything else breaks down, just start cracking walnuts because that 
was a man shake is what that was. And he is uh, playing nose guard right now. Not very tall, probably only 5'9 or so, but he's stout. Second down and 11 after the motion penalty. Valley shotgun back to throw. Looks right, going to throw the screen. Has a man wide open. It's Everhart. Everhart, though, wrapped up and taken down by Caleb Warner after a gain of about six on the play. It looked like it was going to go for a lot more than that. Seven-yard reception. And so Everhart gets the ball out to the 34. They'll mark it back to the 33-yard line. And it'll bring up third down and about five. Well, you don't run that play for a pickup of seven. No, no, that was... And it looked, as it set up, like it was going to be a big play. Well, but, but what happened is the linebackers didn't go. No. So the pressure was from the front four and the linebackers set, but then they didn't get blocked by the, by the downfield That happens blockers. so often as the line lets people through and then can't find the linebackers. Do you think blocked. the split end's job is to get the cornerback out of the play? Uh, he's all the way on the sidelines, third down and five. Everhart left side, stops in the backfield, cut, going to get hit and go down. Messiah made the play. These makers. No Messiah will stop Everhart for no gain, and they're going to be in punt formation. Penetration, man. It's just a killer from defensive tackle. He just jumped the gap, and he guessed right. As he jumped to his right, and the offense ran right into that spot. These makers had him stopped a couple times, but he ended up getting five or six yards out of it. Not that time. And it's going to be punt formation for the Valiants. Well, ball security right here, gentlemen. Up the last one, but yep. recovered the fumble. Good snap this time. Going to take his time and kick it away. This time it's going to go to Boomer. Boomer at the 20 oh. or 32 yard line. How about we slow the Gunners up? Now it's going to be taken down there. Zeke Coon trying to block the defender. And Chris, and Chris has a little something to say to the junior. Yeah, didn't get a lot of help there. Nope. As, uh, Did not get a lot of help. James Bagwell, that sophomore corner, pretty good athlete out there. And beat his man, went down, wrapped up Boomer. And the cheesemakers will get the ball back at their own 34. Uh, real close to where they left off when they last had the ball. Yeah, within about three yards. So we'll see if uh, Tillamook is able to create an offensive rhythm. Valley was certainly uh, looked like they were, and then they made the mistake yeah. and got themselves in uh, a bad down and distance. Tillamook made the play on the screen pass, uh, made the play on third down. Offense is sitting on the field right now. Cheesemakers need to make something happen to get some uh, mojo going here in the second half. They're going to hand off Silvera right side, has to jog in the backfield, and then goes ahead and gets only a yard out of it. Valley getting a lot more penetration yep. now yep. than they were early in the game. And so if there's something where you can get the ball wide, it'd be interesting to see what that looked like. If you can get Macias or Silvera wide, because uh, they're, they're dedicating a lot of people between the tackles. Still asking for some misdirection because they're also flowing hard to the ball. Oh, well, that's been 17 years. Of the I know. Now, that is it? so true. I love misdirection. <laughs> Second down and nine. There's so many things I could say there, and I chose not to say anything. Even when it doesn't work, it sets the pressure. Hand off right side. Shelly got a man open down the field. Zeke Coon catches the ball at the 40 on the halfback pass. Well-thrown ball by Kellen Shelly, and the ball goes all the way down to the 40. The Teesmakers pick up. 25 on the pass reception. A nice catch by Zeke Kuhn as well, who started into a back pedal and then caught it as he fell to his back. But the Chiefmakers moved that, the ball. Does, does that count? It does count. Okay, I was just checking. Uh, it counts. As Shelley takes a handoff going sweep to the right side and then threw it down the field. We asked for that play earlier in the we game, did. and now we get it. There we go. First down, Cheesemaker. See if that loosens, two loosens them up just two, a bit. Two split backs in the backfield. This is a good opportunity to uh, use the defense against themselves. Yep. A little cross buck, maybe. They'll hand off with a lead blocker. There still bear a nice run up the middle. Inside the 40, inside the 30. What's, what's different about that? Like, that gap hasn't been there for the last quarter and a half, right? Uh, you just spread people out, and you can go different directions with two backs in the backfield. It's not so singular to where your linebackers can flow so hard. Cheesemakers run fast and run the same play again. Silvera again, straight up the middle. He goes over 100 yards as he goes down to the 23 with a gain of about five on the play. So back-to-back runs by the Cheesemakers. Watch this now because they're going to fake the ball to him and hand it to Macias going back the other way. 115 for the game for Chris. On 20, 19 carries. Yeah, he's been a workhorse tonight. Yeah. Uh, this play's getting taking a little while to get into the huddle. 
You better five, get out and get the snap out. Five minutes left to play in the third period. As there's a little bit of confusion, but now they get set. Motion right to left goes Kuhn. Makes the hand off, goes to Macias, straight up the middle. Oh. Nice, quick move. And inside the 20, down to the 10. That was a quick move. Oh, that? quick oh, yeah. beat by Macias. Luis Macias, according to Valley Catholic. Takes it down to the 10, and the Cheesemakers knocking on the door as the clock winds. They'll say it sets the 11. First down, Cheesemakers. Up 14 to nothing. Caleb Warner, short slot on the right side. They'll call the play at the line of scrimmage and move Boomer all the way across the formation to the right. Matt Silvera with Macias behind him. They'll hand him Macias. Gets the block on the corner, trying to get it around. It's nice a 10. Block. That's a 5. Touchdown, Cheesemakers. Caleb, Caleb Warner had that block. Boy, Caleb has played a nice game, hasn't he? Caleb Warner hooked the end, and the Cheesemakers take the lead 20 to nothing here in the third period. Cheesemakers with 4.09 left to play. As promised. In the third, we'll bring in the extra point kicker. As Tanner will set the pad down at the 10-yard line, Richardson moves back into the soccer-style kick opportunity. Ball's down, kicks up, it's blocked. And the extra point. By that sophomore corner. And the score is still 20 to nothing. Cheesemakers. Over the Valley Catholic Valiants with 4.09 left to play in the third. We'll take a one-minute break. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Cheesemaker Football as Cheesemakers kick off. Tanner kicks the ball down to the seven-yard line. Watch for the reserve, reverse. They fake it. Now straight back up the middle he goes. Breaks one tackle and then gets taken down nice by, by Macias at the 30-yard line. And Valley will take over there. Nice that, drive. That was, was, that was a really nice scoring drive. That uh, covered 65 yards, 66 yards on six plays, two and a half minutes left. Uh, Macias got the 11-yard touchdown, uh, but really it was Kellen Shelley that loosened that thing up. They ran that halfback pass. Zeke Kuhn made a really nice job catching the ball 25 yards downfield. Had to backpedal into the catch, which always makes me a little bit a little nervous because it's hard to secure the ball going to the dra- ground when you're going backwards. But uh, Zeke was able to collect it, get the first down, and that really changed the momentum right there on that drive. Raleigh Mendez checks into the game as an outside linebacker. Valley comes up with two backs in the backfield. They're going to hand it off to the halfback left side. Huge hole. Out across the 35 to the 40, 45, and down there. Gain of 14 on the play as Napoli gets one of his rare carries. He carried the ball in the first possession and then really has uh, disappeared since then. Yeah, he didn't run the ball at all in the second period. That's uh, 32 yards on four carries. He had 18 on three carries in the first quarter. So the big back. Quick set again as Valley comes right to the line of scrimmage. Napoli, same play, but oh, Messiah is on him this time. Yep, jumped the gap, grabbed his hips, wrapped around. Napoli didn't have a chance at that point. Three, be a two loss. Yep, two-yard loss. Lost the two on the play. Napoli, 6'3", 205. I mean, he's a big body and had a hole big enough for uh, Flemmer to get through, who's 6'7", 265. But if you don't block play the, before that. If you don't block the, uh, the Hawaiian tornado, you're in trouble. <laughs> That is so true. Second down and 12. Messiah, only a sophomore. Oh, and one of the nicest kids you're going to meet. Super sweet kid. Really competes well in the field. Cheesemaker's going to stunt. Near side, they throw it in the flat. Complete to Napoli. Oh. Napoli wrapped up and taken down. Four yards reception as for Napoli. Napoli will pick up about four yards. He Bro- goes down and gets helped up. Brawley made a pretty good play right there yes, because he, he got did. blocked almost in the back. And yet made the play out in the flats with a short gain is all. It's going to be third down and seven. So the Cheesemakers next week have Seaside coming to town. They are either the best or the second best team in the state. We'll know after tonight. Rex is too busy eating chili to return my text about <laughs> trying know. to get Seaside bank scores. He's fired. Oh, third. wait. No, no, no. That's a bad idea. Yeah. No, that's a really bad idea. Third down and seven. Straight back to pass. Heavy pressure coming on. Going to dump it short. Incomplete. Great job defensively. They're asking for pass interference, but Michael Horton was just in the hip pocket of Everhart, and there is no pass interference behind the line of scrimmage, by the way. And and, and Horton said, you know, we almost 
we, we almost, well, we did get fooled. The front four got fooled on that screen play the last time they ran it. Not this time. The linebackers helped us out, but not this time. That was a great play by Horton. Yeah. Either that or he just was so horribly <laughs> blocked that he stumbled back right into that and sort yep. of just bumble stepped his way into making a great play on a screen pass against that, arguably the best athlete that uh, Valley can put on the field. That was a great play by Horton. Fourth down and seven. Ball's their own 49-yard line. They're going to go for it. Down 20 to nothing are the Valley Catholic Valiant. Going to roll to the left side. Got some pressure. Now going to try to get to the outside. Cheesemakers, no. They throw it down the field. Incomplete. He almost crossed the line of scrimmage, then tried to flip it downfield. Incomplete. And the Cheesemaker defense has held. I'm kind of, I'm kind of surprised that uh, Pruitt didn't run that football. Me too. I think he would have had the first down on the run. Cheesemakers get the ball back. With 2.16 left to play in the third period and a three-score lead. Fast third quarter, isn't it? Yeah. This is only the second. Well, the, I guess it's the third time Tillman has touched the ball. The first the first drive took about 45 seconds to do because it was only three plays before they had to turn it over. To the Cheesemakers. But a great punt, right? Set that whole series up. Yeah. Yeah, very, very nice punt. And then the five-yard penalty tacked on. So and then they held and then were able position. to drive the length of the field. The other thing Tillamook has not done is given up the big play today. Knock on God, wood. Oh, that there 10 for 10 hasn't missed a free throw all game. <laughs> Hand off Macias. Or excuse me, that was uh, Chris Silvera. And he will get back to the line before he gets okay. hit and goes down. I think the uh, draw is about ready to be run here at some point. In the right situation, we could see it. Because it's uh, second down and 10, Valley is thinking, now there's a chance the ball is going to be in the air. And the first three steps of that draw from the quarterback, when you're reading the quarterback, the first three steps look like a drop back for a pass. And then it's a late handoff. And, and that's really all you're reading. You know, as a defender, you're, you're, you don't have a, an opportunity to analyze the entire situation. You're just going on first instincts. And it looks like a pass. Warner in a short slot on the right front of the quarterback. Matt Silvera ready to take the snap, sends Stonebrink in motion and gets the ball on a handoff. Stonebrink comes up, makes a nice cut, gets a good block, going to get the first down, and out of bounds he goes. Good I boy. believe that's his first carry of the I, year. I believe that's the first carry of the year, too. Did a great job reading the block and making the correct play. Yeah, a nice block on the outside, and I don't know if that was Warner on the lead or who been, that was. No, yeah, I will say Warner because he was in the, in the H-back position. But the Cheesemakers get the first down on the carry by Stonebrink. Nice job. Tillamook has shown quite a bit of diversity in their offense tonight. As they move the ball, the first down at the 38. Pick up of eight. Tillamook, are they going to go up under center? They are. Up under center with eye backs behind them. Haven't seen this much before either. Going to hand deep back. Right side, lead blocker. Going to go inside the 35. Going to pick up about four. I believe carrying that ball was uh, – was that Mendez? I think it was Mendez. Here we are carrying for number 32, Tanner Richardson. Oh, Richardson. Second down. So Richardson carries the ball. According to the PA, I couldn't tell for sure who that was on the far side of the field. Well, he has a much better view than we do. I don't think Richardson has had a carry ah. – uh, a meaningful carry this year either. Yep. So all o- of a sudden – Open it up the play, both put yeah. kids in position to uh, touch the football. And it'll bring up second down and six into the shotgun set. Matt Silvera. Silvera going to hand right side. It'll be Chris Silvera. Gets the first down inside the 30 on his feet, running down the sidelines inside almost to the 20. So Chris Silvera is going to pick up about 12 or 14 on his own. <laughs> Remember, back- talked, about, talked about being in the game at halftime, right? Yep. And the Cheesemakers, I also told you early in the game that Matt Silvera rolled his ankle badly at practice yesterday. They did not expect him to play tonight, and he has gutted it out. Yeah, he really has. Played one of the best games he's played. Played within uh, his abilities. Hasn't tried to do too much. Has thrown the ball well and has run the offense extremely well. Messiah in the backfield going to get the handoff. Going left side, but he gets wrapped up by Fleming and is going to lose about two yards on the play. He's one of those kids that runs the contact. And the flag comes out, a late flag. Somebody didn't stop on the whistle, and that is the end of the third period of play. We'll sort that all out after we get back after this one-minute break. 20 to nothing, Cheesemakers with the lead back in one minute.
Welcome back to Cheesemaker Football. It's Cheesemakers. There, there's some I weirdness bl- going on here because they haven't moved the chains. Well, I, I think Tillamook has a penalty, and then they're going to move the chains after that. But there's nothing worse than a penalty right at the end of a quarter because you've got a whole lot of things to sort out then. But while they're sorting that out, why don't you tell us what, what happened in the third? Third quarter stats uh, regained some advantage uh, for uh, the Mooks. Uh, ended up getting 12 plays, which is about what they got. You know, they got 15 plays in the first quarter, 12 plays in the second quarter, 12 more plays in the third in the third quarter. But remember, the 12 plays in the uh, second quarter only got them 50 yards. Here, the 12 plays got them 90 yards, and that makes a huge difference. A uh, nine plays for VC for only 40 yards, and so they're sitting. VC is sitting at 128 yards total on 29 plays, and so the uh, the cheesemakers defensively have done exactly what they needed to do. The penalty at the end of that play was against the Cheesemakers, a 15-yard unsportsmanlike, I believe. Which is unfortunate. Yeah, because now they're faced with second down and about 25. The ball comes all the way back out to the 39. They now, had should that, that should be third down. Well, unless they're saying it was before the play was over, which obviously then They would have reset not. the clock and run it. Yeah. So it's second down and very long. Going to hand up. Off to Silvera, straight up the middle, and he gets cut down by Herrera. Nice job. Herrera just stepping through and taking his legs out. And it'll be third down and long, long. they got to go all the way down to the 12. They're at the 37. That'd be 25 yards. 130 yards on 22 carries. Uh, Great night for the senior, Chris Silvera. And uh, Matt has not had the ball touch the ground yet. You know, Matt's thrown the ball seven times, seven receptions to uh, four different kids. Very, very good night for yep. Matt Silvera. Yep. I know that he wasn't happy with his game last week, and the Cheesemakers have seen him bounce back. Good competitor, both those kids, Silvera twins. Third down and very long for the Cheesemakers. Going to roll left, look down the field, throws, and it is incomplete. Valley thought they intercepted it. But it will be incomplete, uh, and the I, Cheesemakers, I know, that was I did you. it, didn't I? Yep. I did it. Shoot. Most of I'm sorry. You I'm said. sorry. I'm sorry. I know better than that. 18 years, he's constantly telling me, man, you're going to jinx it. You're going to jinx it. Don't say it. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I totally let you down, honey. So it is fourth down and 25. Now what are the Cheesemakers going to do? I think you punt the ball here. Yeah, I think you play defense. I don't think that's what they're going to do. I think they're going to pooch kick this thing. Yes, thank you, Aaron. I know I jinxed them. God, I'm getting it from my coworkers too. That's good. God, it's good. Now let's see. We maybe have three I, listeners. Got to own it. <laughs> I do. I got to own my stuff. That's what Eric Larson says. Fourth and 25. Back to pass. No, they'll run the draw and thrown down. So Valley gets a stop. See, that draw was too quick. Yeah, yeah. Didn't did not give that time to set up at all. And the cheesemakers. Will go on defense, and Valley now has good field position. And some Mo. And they picked up a little emotion. Well, the good news is there, there's three scores down. That's true. That's the good news. The other good news is they have not scored yet tonight. Correct. They would have so, to get almost double their yardage for yep. the game. In this to, quarter. To, yes, to get a touchdown. So the quarterback threw it. Sets up. Back to pass. Looks right, throws right. Right through the hands of Everhart. Everhart called for a changeup, and uh, Pruitt gave him a fastball. Yeah, that was a fastball, too. I mean, he uncorked that thing. Yep. I remember that title. Who was the wide receiver they had here a couple years ago that we just couldn't uh, do anything about? Yeah, big kid, Hardy. Hardy, there Hardy. we go. Just threw the ball up to Hardy, and he just flat I mean, beat everybody. We could have put three kids in a step ladder over on there on that <laughs> side of the field with brooms, and we still couldn't have defended that. No, nope, that kid was a stud. Uh, better than us. I think that's what that is. What's that play? Better than you. Okay, don't run it again, please. Second down and 10. Pruitt going to roll to the right side. Throw short. Pass complete. Wrapped up by Kuhn. And going to go down there. Five-yard reception. As, uh, George it'll be a gain of about seven by Eisenhart on the reception. Oh, yeah. It'll bring up third down and three. Make it a gain of six, third down and four. Ball at the 47-yard line. Pretty much you're down to four, four down territory. Uh, pretty much anywhere now. Anywhere now. Yep. Game. And you're 0-3 in league. Like, yep. you know, let's, let's go have fun. Screw it. 
Shotgun set, going to roll to the near side. Throws into the flats. It's dropped, incomplete. Had a man open and did not hang on to it. Diego Robinson, a 5'7", 140-pound junior, could not hang on to it. So it's fourth down and about four for Valley. Well, when you roll out, you uh, drop the field in half. Yeah, you only you have know? half as many but people if, to throw to. But if you drop straight back, then you, especially at this level, you can't see anything. It's right? also a long throw if you're going to yep. throw to the sidelines like you did there. Fourth down and short. Watch the quarterback to run. Pruitt, the only guy in the backfield in a run and shoot set with a tight end. Straight back drop. Going to throw right side. Complete again. Out across midfield, down, down to the 45, and out of bounds it goes. Eisenhart on the reception to the 44-yard line. And Eisenhart, back-to-back receptions, gets the first down. Pick up a nine. They move the chains with 10-15 left to play in the game. 20 to nothing. Cheesemakers with the lead. They're drawing the play up in the huddle right here. Yeah, it looks like they were. You're going to go this way, and then I'm going to go that way. Need a little more chalk. So hop down there and bark like a dog and get everybody to look at you. (laughs) Quarterback going to go back to throw. Now he's in trouble, going to scramble to the right side and has a ton of room. Down the sidelines he goes and now out of bounds as Cruz chased him to the sidelines. It'll be short of the first down, but it picks up eight. Pruitt picks up eight on the play. Check it out. As the ball goes down to the 36 of the Cheesemakers, Tillamook lost total contain on that side and had a linebacker chase Pruitt down. Well, and the, wrong, the linebacker was on the wrong side of the formation, and so Tommy Cruz had a long way to go and did not not have the angle. Pruitt looks at his wristband, now goes up to the line of scrimmage and changes the play, apparently, because they'd already huddled up once and called the play. Second down and short. Pruitt sets up. Quarterback draw. Quarterback draw. Straight up the middle he goes. Nice move. Inside the 30. Now cuts left. Gets the block there at the 25. Out of bounds he goes. Oh, and he, what was he doing? Throwing the ball. Although it went out of bounds. And now he is slow getting up. But he's going to head back into the huddle. A really nice run by Pruitt. And now he doesn't make it to the huddle. And coach is going to let him go. He's holding that right elbow, forearm, something like that. He is not going to throw the ball on this play if the coach picked his head up at all. First down at the 21-yard line. Quarterback draw up the middle and got uh, a nice gain on the play of about 11. Through it, his throwing arm was what was hanging. We'll see what he does here. Cheesemaker showing blitz. Straight back, he will throw to the right side. Everhart oh. on the catch at the 15. Down to almost the 10. He's quick, isn't he? Yep. Made a nice cut and just flat beat Macias out on the flat. Uh, maybe that was Cruz. No, it was Macias. He beat on the flats as he faked right and then jogged back inside. And for the first time tonight, Valley is knocking on the cheesemaker door at the 11-yard line. Second down and one after the gain of nine on the play. Cheesemakers get back and move defensively. Two backs in the backfield with Pruitt this time. Pruitt, low snap, but gets the handoff up the middle. I don't think he's going to get enough for the first down. Uh, Nice job, Michael Horton, I think, came across again. It was Horton and number 44, uh, Nemi. Nemi. And it'll bring up second down and two. It'll be a loss of one on the play. And every time you hold them from a first down or going out of bounds, it's going to gain you 30 seconds. It will take seconds. at least 20 off there as they huddle up again. Now come to the line of scrimmage. Third down and two. Cheesemaker's going to bring everybody. Hand off. No. Play action. Throw left side. Oh. Drop by Everhart. Bounced it right off his chest plate. He was at the goal line, too. And he would have scored. Pretty good coverage there, but a very well-thrown ball. And the guy who's going to be most sad about that is Everhart. Yeah, and Pruitt does not have the arm and the touch to be able to throw to the corner. So if I was Kellen, I'd line up on the inside of him, take away the slant, and force the pass to be thrown to the outside over the top of your shoulder. Yeah, we have not seen air under the ball at all from he's, Pruitt. He's lined up, Kellen's lined up inside a little bit right there. He's, he's inside the hash, and Everhart's outside the hash. Fourth and three. 
Oh, didn't flinch. Hand off straight ahead. Going to get the first down. Big back, I believe. It yep. was. Napoli. Nap- Nap- Napoli. Napoli on the carry. We'll take it down. Inside the 10-yard line, it'll be first and goal, Valley, from there. Well, you want to get your hands team organized right now for your kickoff. Yes, you do. Because because I see Valley scoring on this drive, and I'm, my guess is they're going to uh, onside kick, and you want to make certain you're organized as a special team. I see the cheesemaker defense stepping up right here. Napoli straight up the middle, not going to get much. Is Messiah right there to throw him down. Cheesemakers had good penetration that time. I'm a little bit surprised they ran the ball. They've moved the ball down the field by by creating a little bit more open offense, throwing it, quarterback yep. draw, stuff like that. Yeah, but they've also had a couple balls go through hands, get dropped, get face-plated. Yeah, the guy that they have thrown effectively to is Eisenhart, who split all the way out to the right side with Zeke Kuhn on him with about an 8-yard cushion at the 10-yard line. Quarterback, hands off. Up the middle he goes. Not much there is again Messiah. He's had a great game, and Valley has a player. I, I, wish, on the I wish Jack Zappington were here. Yeah. We'd have defensive stats on what Messiah has done. Loss of one on the play. It'll bring up third and goal from the 11 now as the player pops back up for Valley. And we'll head back to the huddle. Nearing the seven minute mark left in the ball game, 20 to nothing, Cheesemakers. Trying to pick up their fourth win of the year. Split backs in front of the quarterback. Big play. Play action. Going to look left side. Throws to Everhart. Broken up. And oh, now yes, incomplete. No. Oh, Chris Barrett thought hey. that he had it. Kellen Shelley did a great job right there driving on the ball and breaking it up because Everhart uh, had the ball thrown to him, and Kellen did a fantastic job of making the play on the ball that popped up in the air, and Chris Vera from free safety thought maybe he had just scooped it right there to get the pick in the end zone. But the uh, side official on the Valley Catholic side said incomplete pass, and uh, that's going to bring up fourth down in the punt team, or the kick field goal team, it looks like to me. No, I don't think so. Well, they did a pretty big shift. Change. Yeah, but quarterback still in there. Shelly that time, same play that they yep. had thrown to Everhart, should have scored before that Everhart dropped it. Shelly read it perfectly and learned very well from the last time around. They will go for it on fourth and goal from the 11. Pruitt and Everhart just slapped hands. Huge play. <laughs> as Eberhardt was going to his slot position. And the Cheesemakers want timeout. We'll take timeout as well. 6.51 left to play in the game. 20 to nothing. Tillamook back in one minute. Going back to Cheesemaker football as Valley comes to the line of scrimmage. Fourth and goal from the 11 after the Tillamook timeout. Shotgun set with nobody else in the backfield with quarterback. Back to throw. Now going to roll the left side. Getting in trouble. Coming up to make the play at the five. Going to drive down to the three and the two, but he's down there. Going to be short of the first down of the Cheesemaker defense has held. You were right. I was wrong. That, you could just say that often. Hey, Tammy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was right. I was wrong. There you go. Cheesemakers get the stop, and that was a time-consuming drive that moved the ball all the way down the field, but the Cheesemakers get the stop and take it over on down at the three-yard line. Great job by the yeah, defense of the Cheesemakers. cheesemakers. Yeah, because that was uh, uh, – VC got the ball at the 11-minute mark, and so that was over five minutes that yeah. uh, Tillamook was able to play defense and not give up points. Yep. Got to appreciate that. So now they need to move the ball, get a couple first downs, and run some time off the clock. Going to hand off left side to uh, Chris Silvera. He breaks the tackle on the left side out across the 10 to the 20 and thrown down finally at the 25-yard line. And there is a flag down away from the play. Ah, That's going to bring this back as Cheesemakers, I think, did something behind the play, and that'll be just a really frustrating penalty for Coach Kai Johnson if it's on Tillamook. Yeah, it had nothing to do with the play. No, it was 10 yards behind the play. Lock in the back. And it will be unsportsmanlike. Oh, oh no, it's against Valley Catholic. 
So a 15-yard penalty tacked on to the end of the 20-yard run. That's a 35-yard swing right there. That's a, that's a heartbreaker. Yeah, a huge play for the cheesemakers. And that could be a demoralizing play yep. for yep. Valley. So you had them on the three, and now it's the 40. Yep. 37 yards later with the run and the penalty, the cheesemakers take their backs off the wall and move the ball to the middle of the field. A lot of pressure off the offense right oh, now. Oh, man, that was a big play. You know, last ball game, it swung on two or three yep. plays. Yep. A couple pass plays, a defensive stop that wasn't able to be had. Cheesemakers set up in the shotgun. They wait for the official, make sure they've used all their time. Now they hand off Chris Silvera. Nice cut in the backfield to get back to the line of scrimmage. As defensive end on the far side brought in a lot of pressure, penetration. He stuck a foot in the ground and turned right. Ended up taking a play designed to run around the left tackle or outside of the left tackle all the way back over to the right guard. And the cheesemakers will face second down and 10, but they're fortunate to only be facing 10. 152 yards on 24 carries. This, wow. uh, Chris is really, I don't know if I've seen a game where he's uh, filled the stat sheet three, three rows wide yeah. as, uh, as he has uh, touched the ball a ton of times. He has packed the mail tonight for sure. Same set again. Two receivers wide to the right side. One back in the backfield. Matt Silvera. Oh, the ball goes through his hands. It's bouncing behind him. He picks it up, drops it again, and now he falls on it. The cheesemakers ended up with it as Napoli had a shot, and he would have scored, but he couldn't come up with it as Matt Silvera recovers it at the 20. They're going to lose 21 yards on the play and be happy. Yes, that's a total win right there. Because that ball was so close to going for six the other way. So the cheesemakers will now have third down and about 30. Boy, what would John Woodward do? Hey, Rick Burden, what would John Woodward do? He he would quick Oh, I hate that play right right now. Because the cheesemakers on third and forever. They'll hand to Macias, who breaks a couple tackles left side and is going to pick up about five yards on the play, and the cheesemakers are going to have to punt the ball away. But that was very close to a... Huge play for yep. Valley Catholic. Yeah, the ball went, uh, the snap was uh, a bit up and to the right, and Matt couldn't quite get his hands on it, and then tried to pick it up and do something with it, and it popped loose the second time, and VC had a great shot at it, and uh, Matt somehow was able to come back, scramble up, to control that fumble. 3.53 left to play in the game. Snap and kick away by Boomer, going to go left side, hit at the 45 and roll out of bounds at about the 39. So great exchange there by the Cheesemakers, who got a stop at the three and now give Valley the ball back in their own territory at about their own 40. And the Cheesemakers will go back on defense again with 340 left to play in a game, a 20 to nothing lead. The offense's responsibility on that last drive was to not turn the ball over. Yep. And uh, they tried, but they They couldn't quite do it. Their their responsibility was to not score. Their responsibility is to not turn the ball over. You've just got to control the game at this point. As uh, Tillamook has the uh, the 20 point lead and Valley uh, have the momentum and, and and the defense made the play and and uh, the offense was successful. Didn't turn the ball over. These maker defense being called on again as they lead 20 to nothing. Don't have to stop them, just have to slow them down. Quarterback's going to roll left through it to the outside, looks and now he's going to bring it out of bounds and almost runs over the Gatorade bucket. Boom of the night. Stop the key. stop the clock after a two yard, make a three yard gain. Daniel Pruitt. With three thirty four left to play in the game. Two yards he'll give us out to the forty two. Right in front of us as we sit up on the top row of the bleachers here. Uh, I appreciate the tushy cushion here. I know. I, I was pretty smart. I dug out uh, the uh, the airplane traveling blanket today. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? Those are radiators we sit on up there and it goes the wrong way. It just sucks. The heat right out of your hind end. I was like, nope, I need me some fleece. Pruitt going to look right, throws down the seam. Nice catch by Everhart on the dive at the 40-yard line. Okay, Everhart. 
That was a great catch by Everhart that time, which probably is, tells you why he was so frustrated the last time around when he dropped that one that he would have scored. They'll wind the clock and get set. First down at the Tillamook 40. Going to look right, throw right. Everhart again. Wrapped up, but he's going the wrong way. He's going to come all the way back against the formation. Out to the 40. Still running near side. Oh, he drops the ball, the ball oh. loose. And I think it came right back up in his arm. He dribbled it. He did dribble it. And the cheesemakers uh, take him down. And before he gets out of bounds, and now Valley's going to call timeout. All that running, gain a two. Timeout, Valley Catholic. 20 to nothing. Tillamook with 3.01 left to play in the game. We'll be back after this one-minute break for our sponsors. Uh, football, second down and eight. Through it. Ball's the 38. Pump fake right side. Going to try to hang it out right. Oh, almost got a hold. Didn't get the call. Going to throw it down the field. It is incomplete. Good coverage there by Zeke Kuhn. Breaking on the football. Eisenhart came up trying to make the play, but Zeke Kuhn right there with him. Well, that pump that uh, through it rolled, either no one bit on or no one saw enough to be able to bite on it. Yeah. And then Messiah flushed him. Tell you, Zeke Coons had a good game, his best game of the year Absolutely. tonight as well. Yeah, his athleticism shows tonight. Yeah, yeah, he's done a really nice job at a corner on the far side against uh, uh, Eisenhart. Third down and eight, Valley. Through it, takes the shotgun snap, flips to the right side, complete. Eisenhart on the reception, inside the 40, inside the 30, I believe, and out of bounds to get enough for the first down. Eisenhart on the carry to the right side after the reception on kind of a hitch pattern. I told you earlier that Zeke Kuhn giving him a lot of cushion out there. I'm not totally against that. That's why he didn't get beat on that pump and go on the last play. That's right. But he hadn't he hadn't even started back no. on the pump. <laughs> but Valley did a nice job coming back to that and getting the well, eight yards they needed in its first down, but Telemuk's also happy to give that up. I was gonna say they're not gonna lose giving up eight yards. Nope. Through it. Shotgun set, going to roll to the left side. Tons of time to throw. Throws it across the middle. Too high that time for Everhart on the crossing pattern with Macias covering him. That Goes incomplete. Will French. 2.40 left to play in the ball game. These makers still hanging on to that 20-point lead. This has not been a flashy game, no. but has been pretty, uh, pretty dominant. Pretty solid. Pretty one-sided. Yeah, yep. pretty solid for the cheesemakers. The score may be not indicative of the way this game has been played. Well, Tillamook and Valley Catholic could play 10 times, and Tillamook would win nine of them, guaranteed. They might go 10-0. and 0, Yeah. Because I don't see how Valley has the ability to win. Pruitt, a little draw, right side. Got a block, now he's going to carry it. Inside the 25, out of bounds at the 20. First down. Uh, make it the 17, and it'll be first down Valley there. The ball at the 17-yard line. What I will say is that Valley did not uh, wilt in the second half this year like they did last year. No, they had uh, that with the scoring drive. Tillamook had. They didn't play with a lot of passion. No. And uh, but then they did play with passion on their next offensive series. But Tillamook was able to make the plays inside the red zone to uh, deny. And they're in the red zone again inside the 20 at the 17. Defensive coordinators hate losing shutouts in the final two minutes. Quarterback back to throw, looking over the middle. Throws it deep over the Pick. middle, and it's intercepted. Miguel Nimai. I believe, and it is, interception cheesemakers, and it will be, is it Nimai or is it? Caleb Warner, maybe. Oh, he's wearing a four on the back of his jersey. The double four or, or a single four? Caleb Boomer. Oh, no, it's not, it's not Boomer. Number 44. Yep. That is Miguel Nimi. Miguel Nimai, sorry. I just heard it on the PA. I had to repeat it. <laughs> Miguel Nimai. If you say it, repeat If you hear it, repeat it. <laughs> yep. On the interception, the cheesemaker defense is held again. 227 left to play in the game. Great job as that ball was thrown into a crowd. Triple coverage. And Nimai at the linebacker position with a deep drop, 20-yard drop there, came up with the interception, his first interception of the year. 
and the Cheesemakers take the ball back on offense. Yeah, he's going to be a name that you hear quite a bit of next year. Only a sophomore, I believe. Yep. One back behind. It's Chris Silvera. Chris gets the handoff. Right side. Now goes left side. Now gets a block. Now he's going to try to get to the corner. Out across the 30. 35 40. And out of bounds somewhere over there. We'll see where they mark it. They'll say the 43 yard line, but he'll pick up almost 20 on the carry. And that was all Chris Silvera. As that play was supposed to go right, and it ended up going left down the sideline. Pick up a 23 if they're going to mark that on the 43. 43 it is. And the Chiefs 180. will have the first down as they continue to turn the chains over. And make the clock begin again. Cheesemakers ready to win their fourth game of the year as they'll go into next week against Seaside, who went into the night as the number one ranked team in the state, and they haven't had anybody even remotely close to them in a game. And off left side, Macias. Macias gets around that same corner. Down the sideline, he's going to go. Macias is going to go 57 yards for the score. Luis Macias makes it a 26 to nothing game as he breaks one down the left sideline, and the Cheesemakers are going to win this thing going away as they lead it 26 to nothing with 2.06 remaining. So the Cheesemakers back to back runs by Chris Silvera and Luis Macias, and they take it to the house, and the Cheesemakers have sealed this thing up as Richardson comes in to attempt the extra point. Chris Silvera, the holder. Richardson, the kicker. And a bad snap, and Silvera will run to the right side, gets caught, wrapped up, and tries to throw incomplete. Really good opportunity as he flipped it to the right into the end zone when he was going down and had no other option. Sam Connolly was there, and he juggled it, diving, and it looked like he almost came up with it, but not. And the Cheesemakers go away or miss the extra point, but they lead 26 to nothing with 2.06 remaining. We'll take a one-minute break. We'll be back after this. It's number. Welcome back to Cheesemaker Football. As the Cheesemakers kick off, Richardson, line drive this time, bounces at the 15, caught at the 10. Going to return to the right side, left side, and now stops and gets around the corner. Out across the 35 to the 40. Breaks the tackle at the 45-50. Across midfield, down to the 45-yard line where Richardson makes the tackle as the kicker. So great field position, best field opening field position of the night. For Valley, but they trail 26 to nothing with a minute 56 left to play in the game. So the Cheesemaker defense will try to get some. Uh, it looks like they only take 16. So the first 12, and then you got four. So we'll at look. At, we'll look at that playoff picture. That's going to be different this nice. year. And uh, let's keep that. Keep this here. Cheesemakers. We'll ask for timeout. They're trying to get some players into the ball game. Some of the players I'm seeing out there are uh, Keegan Haggerty, also all in the ball game is Nemi still. Let's see, uh, number 28 would be. Oh, uh, that's already Haggerty. 17. That'll be Sam Connolly. So, so what are you reading there? So We're looking at the playoff picture. So 12 teams automatically qualify for the OSSA 16 team bracket based on regular season play and so each district gets two allotted playoff spots to their ones and twos and so that's 12 of the 16 now eight teams will qualify as play in teams based on frozen osaa rankings so once the 12 automatic league qualifiers are determined the next eight highest ranked teams will compete in a four play in contest that means the top 20 get in correct and it doesn't make any difference where you finish in league it's just the top after after the top two right but it's not like a, my number. My number four uh, is under your number three, right? Because you're a three and I'm a four. Yeah. It's like no, based on OSA ranking. So ranking will be the difference. Tillamook was 20 going into tonight, 
Quarterback going to look right, throws right. It is complete to Eisenhart. Eisenhart wraps around, gets about a 9 or 10 yard gain. Tackle out there. Clayton Lundy. Was made once by Lundy. Eisenhart. In the ball game, also Jordan Mitchell in a down lineman position. No, that's good. I yep. love Jordan Mitchell. He's a great kid. Aiden Johnson in defensively as well. Also in the ball game is uh, Tyson O'Hagan. Quarterback this time going to roll left. O'Hagan on the uh, rush. Ball thrown, but thrown short. And there's going to be a flag down in the backfield. And the official's going to wobble over. He looks kind of like a weeble. Now, 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 now. Wobble over and uh, drop the flag in the hip pocket of the guy that just made the block in the backfield. And that's going to be a 10-yard penalty against Valley. So, cheesemakers, let's see. Who else do they have in there? Number 65, Joseph Barker in the ball game. Let's see. In the backfield, it'll be uh, Isaac Felix. Stonebrink also in the defensive backfield. And they um, they still have to go back and mark this penalty off. And tell them what's going to accept the penalty. Well, second down and one, or you can take 10 yards from the – Or first and 20. 20. That's, not, that's, that's not the hardest decision no. you'll have to make today. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be um, all the ones, all the twos, and all the threes and every league qualified, and then the next highest ranked four. Right. And, and when they dropped last year, when they dropped down to uh, fewer teams, I think they've got 32 teams now at the three at the 4A level. They shrunk down the number of teams that qualify. And so all the ones and twos qualify, and then the next eight highest ranked play for the bottom four spots. You'll still end up with a 16-team playoff. Lob pass down the left sideline, incomplete, almost intercepted there by Sam Connolly. It used to be there were eight teams that got a bye and then 16 teams who played to get to the other eight to be their their opponents. Now 12 teams qualify and get the bye. Eight teams play to make the other four that creates your 16-team tournament. And so the Cheesemakers will not be in the first 12. We know that. No. And I they think they're going to be hard. They think they're going to be hard for us. They're going to have to beat Seaside to be in the in the next. That'll be eight. close. Yep. Because coming right now in, they're 23. Right. Coming into this game, now even losing to the number one ranked team will have them pretty darn close. Quarterback scrambles left side, looking down the field. Now he's going to carry it himself and then taken down by Connolly. Nice job by Connolly. Didn't back just, down at all. He stood his ground, didn't he? Yes, he did. <laughs> I love it. And took Pruitt down. First down run for Daniel Pruitt. It'll come down to the 32 of the Cheesemakers with 108 left to play, and Valley's still trying to get that goose egg off the board, trailing 26 to nothing. Quarterback going to look right and roll right. Throws into the flats, Everhart over his hand. Incomplete. Under a minute left to play. Only question is what the final score is going to be. Cheesemakers going to move to four and three. And the only thing that's going to mess this up is there's a number two in a league that's ranked below 20. Yeah. Because then they qualify. They do, and if, that, if that it, means in 19 is it, the top number. That's right. And uh, I haven't looked at it close yeah, enough Yeah, I haven't yet. looked at it close enough to see if there's a number two that's ranked below 20. You're going to have a lot better idea tonight after uh, Valley and, or excuse me, Seaside and Banks play. But they're going to be the top two teams out of the Coapa League. That's that's almost a given. Yeah, they were one and three with Gladstone in between them. Yeah. Second down and ten. Quarterback rolls right. Now he's going to continue to roll right. Now he'll carry the ball up the field at 20. Cuts back against the green, going across the formation. Nice That's tackle. Great job that time by the cheesemakers, uh, Keegan Haggerty. Through it. Really nice job by Haggerty. Great Open form field. tackle. Yep. Tuck his head in front, wrapped up, took the legs out, took him down. That's well, just that's a form tackling right there. 45 seconds left, ball to 16. First down. Going to throw right side to Everhart. Everhart breaks the tackle. Now he's going to run for the corner. At the 10, 5, touchdown. touchdown. So Valley has something to cheer about. I don't mind that at all. With because I'm not the defensive coordinator. Yeah. Uh, with 33 seconds left to play in the game, Cheesemakers' lead is cut to 26-6. to six. 
and Valley will come in to attempt the extra point, I believe, by way of kick, although uh, the quarterback, is he going to be a holder in the shotgun? He will be a holder. As in to attempt the extra point will be uh, back blue. D-L-A-U. How would you pronounce that? D-L-A-U. Blah. Wow. Wow. (laughs) Either way, he kicks it up and through. 26 to 7. Cheesemakers lead with 33 seconds left. We'll keep this one right here. Nate, if you got a chance, why don't you tell us a little bit about what the other sports are doing this week? Well, uh, most of the sports are wrapping up this week. Volleyball, well, I, I take it back. Soccer has a, a week plus a, plus a game. Uh, volleyball is going to wrap up on Thursday with uh, Senior Night against Valley Catholic. Uh, Valley Catholic is undefeated in the league. Uh, Tillamook is in second place. They lost to VC um, first time through, and, and unfortunately the girls went into banks and played the worst volleyball of the uh, season uh, last week and ended up losing to banks in three sets, which is uh, really crazy. So they have two uh, losses in league, and so they don't have a chance at the state at the league title because uh, Valley is going to have the tiebreaker on them. Um, it's a senior night. Best volleyball uh, in the Coapa will be played uh, at Bob Lamb Court on Thursday. Uh, boys soccer is also going to wrap up on Thursday with a, uh, a really important match against Seaside. Uh, Seaside is 5-1 and one in the league. Tillamook is in third place at 3-2, and two, I do believe. 4-2 and two maybe third place. And uh, this has an opportunity to move them up the rankings. Uh, played a pretty chippy game. It was a 2-0 loss in Seaside when they played uh, first time through. Um, girls soccer has senior night uh, on Monday um, in, in, in a couple days um, against Astoria. They're going to wrap the season up uh, the following Tuesday against Valley Catholic, but uh, they're going to do senior night a, a night early. Uh, this is a game that uh, the girls think they uh, absolutely have a chance at winning. Uh, lost to them 1-0 up in Astoria and uh, want to come out on senior night and play hard uh, 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 for, the, for the seniors uh, on next Monday. Uh, District cross country, I think, is next week as well. My guest, Pat, expects the girls to finish one, two, three, four, five yep. in JV. Valley getting ready. Well. To onside kick with 33 seconds left. No, they're going to kick it deep. Ball's going to be picked up at the 10 and down there. <laughs> As Chris, because you know what? I've been hit at yeah, that time. He has, too. 180 <laughs> yards on the night as the cheesemakers will take the ball back for the final time tonight, and I would assume we'll just take a knee with a 26-7 lead and 31 seconds remaining in the game. I would be surprised if Valley calls a timeout. Yeah. Although we have had coaches in the past who have done that. (laughs) The old college try, down by 19 with 31 seconds left. As Valley running players on and off, I don't know if they have 11 or not, but the Cheesemaker's going to go into the victory formation as quarterback Silvera will step up, take the snap, and take a knee. Cheesemaker's going to win this thing 26-7 to over the Valley Catholic Valiants. Cheesemaker's move to 4-3 and three on the season. Valley moves to 2-5 and five on the season. Cheesemaker's the winners, 26 to 7, and we're going to take a one minute break. We'll be back with Sports Extra after this break for our sponsors. <laughs> Welcome back to Cheesemaker Football and Sports Extra, brought to you by the Les Schwab Tire Center, the place to go for your tire care. Tillamook Cheesemakers with a really nice win here tonight, 26 to uh, 7. Is that right? I can't see the board yet. 26 to 7. Who are you seeing on a crutch? That's Landon there? Warner. That's what I'm thinking. That looks like Landon Warner. I didn't see him. Which is why in the second half. Dan Conley was playing a lot of tight end, maybe, right? Yeah. So Landon Warner down there hobbling himself off uh, on a bad left knee, it looks like, as one crutch on a hand as well, and so did not see when that happened, but that would be a big loss to the Cheesemakers, a two-way starter for the Mooks. Uh, Cheesemakers in this ball game took the their second possession, marched down the field 69 yards in 10 plays, and with four minutes left in the first period, second in the end zone. Big play there was a 20-yard pass to Kellen Shelley, and also three first downs by way of penalty on that drive. And then with 30 seconds left, 
in the first period. Chris Silvera went in from 23 yards out to make it a 14 to nothing uh, score as the Cheesemakers received that ball after a fumble recovery at midfield. No score until the third quarter then with 4-10 left, and Macias went in from 11 yards out on a nice run, made it 20 to nothing after a 66-yard six-play drive. Uh, Shelley on the halfback pass down to Kuhn, the biggest play on that drive. And then in the fourth period, the Cheesemakers put two more uh, security scores on the board. As Excuse me, one more security score on the board. As with 2.10 left to play in the game, Luis Macias went in from 57 yards out. That was an 80 play, 80 yard, that'd be a record, 80 yard two play drive in just 20 seconds. Two big runs on that. Made it 26 to nothing. And then Valley finally scored against the uh, second team of the Cheesemakers. Made it 26 to 7, the final score. And the Cheesemakers win it going away. Nate's going to have the stats. We'll have those and more here on Sports Extra after this word from the Les Schwab Tire Center. Tire Center, the place to go for your tire care. Tillamook wins at 26 to 7 over Valley Catholic. What about the stats from tonight's game? 49 snaps, 353 yards, 273 of those on the ground. is just a dominating performance on the ground. Threw the ball eight times, completed seven of them for 80 yards. As the Cheesemakers just came out and had a really nice offensive night and uh, played hard um, all four quarters, did not have a let up at all. Leading the, the uh, rush for the Cheesemakers, Chris Overa, 180 yards on 26 carries. As he was the hawk, Luis Macias had 89 yards on eight carries. And then uh, Caleb Warner, excuse me, Caleb Boomer, Tanner Richardson, Messiah, Riley Mendez, and uh, Trent Stonebrink all had one carry each for the rest of those yards. Catching the ball, Kellen Shelley had his catch for uh, 20 yards. Zeke Kuhn had two for 29. Caleb Warner had three for 34, all in the third corner. And uh, Boomer caught one ball as well. As, uh, the Cheesemakers just really had a nice offensive ball game. But as good as their offense was, I thought their defense was as solid. Yep. 55 snaps off. For VC, they got a bunch of snaps in the uh, fourth quarter, 293 yards. That looks pretty gaudy, but a lot of those yards were put up again in the fourth quarter when they had that long drive about halfway through that stalled out on the eight-yard line. That put a lot of yards up. And then the, the final drive against the uh, JV squad put some yards up as well. But it was a dominating performance, uh, both offensively and defensively for the Cheesemakers. And it's really nice to see, considering how disappointed they were walking off the field seven days ago uh, up in Astoria where they thought they had a chance to win the ball game and they couldn't quite make the plays necessary to make them. And here they did. They didn't make the defensive mistakes and they made the offensive plays that were necessary. And so the cheesemakers should be really proud of uh, how they competed tonight. Now the question moving forward, let's enjoy this and let's figure out if we can shock the, uh, the state by uh, competing against Seaside. That'll get you into the playoffs. That'll get, that'll get, that'll get you into the playoffs. So Cheese- there's no doubt about it. Cheesemakers win it 26-7 to tonight over Valley Catholic. We'll be back with a final wrap-up after this. Welcome back to Cheesemaker Football and Sports Extra, brought to you by the Les Schwab Tire Center, the place to go for your tire care. Tillamook wins at 26-7. to Here in Valley Catholic, they moved to 4-3 and on the season with one game remaining against one of the best teams in the state, the Seaside Seagulls. The two-time defending state basketball champions and a very, very good football team as well as uh, Cheesemakers will take on Seaside in Tillamook on Friday night. That's 7 o'clock uh, kick. We'll be on the air about 6.45 for that ball game, and they have a lot riding on it because in the end, the top 20 teams in the state power rankings are going to get a playoff game the following week, a state play in game the following week, and Tillamook, uh, if they could upset Seaside, really if they could even come close to Seaside, they're going to be happy because Seaside has dominated every team they've played this year. Now they have banks tonight, so we'll see how that goes. Should be pretty interesting, and you're going to want to come out to see it. Next Friday night should be a nice night at Doc Adams Field. This has been Sports Extra brought to you by the Les Schwab Tire Center, the place to go for your tire care. This has been Randy Shield along with Nathan Radcliffe saying good night and good sports. It's been a KTIL Sports presentation.